Hello, everyone. Welcome to It's a Long Story, a game where we roll dice, we tell stories, and we create magic. Uh, we are here with our lovely crew, uh, the crew of the mongoose, the, the mongoose, the mongoose crew. Yeah. Mongooses, yes. Mong uh, mongoose. Mongoose. Hey, mongooses. Uh, everybody take a look at the camera, wave, and say hi. 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 Uh, yes, welcome. Uh, for those who are here for the first time, uh, this is a D&D &D live play uh, where we uh, we like to... Uh, we like to have uh, fun in deep role play sort of uh, sessions, but uh, specifically what makes this uh, our Tales of Imea sort of uh, part for It's a Long Story so great is that it is four, uh, uh, four parties that live and exist in the same homebrew world at the same time. The wonderful, beautiful world of Imea. Um, so there's a lot of fun stuff that happens where like we have crisscross guest speakers, things like that. Um, guest speakers. That's not, that doesn't feel good. Um, <laughs> guest players. Yeah. Guest players. There we go. Ted there's talks. the word. Ted talks. Yeah. Here's the my Ted talk. Occasional altar call. Oh boy. <laughs> mm -hmm. You group um, logins. <laughs> group logins. Uh, welcome. Welcome to the chat. Um, no. Uh, uh, so uh, feel free to stick around. I hope you like it. Um, and uh, before we get into stuff for tonight, we're going to do a couple of our normal announcements. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we are looking for players for our Candela Obscura game. Um, this is our uh, this is our homebrew sort of version of Candela Obscura. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, check out Critical Role stuff. Uh, they're kind of pushing this as the uh, it's a new sort of cosmic horror game, high in role play um uh, very simplistic rules very simple dice system uh so for our sort of version of that uh we make that same sort of high stakes creepy um scary sort of uh atmosphere and stick it into a more real life setting uh putting it into the year 1901 in the beautiful uh place that is uh is my my childhood home uh the north shore of massachusetts um, so it's super fun, super creepy. Uh, if you want to check it out, we did a play test earlier back in September um, that was super fun. And we're trying to get a full campaign going for that. We've been trying to do so for a while now. So if you are interested in checking that out and joining, uh, please feel free to follow the link uh, below in the video description if you are watching from YouTube. Uh, but uh, in either case, uh, for both cases, I'm also putting in the private chat as well as putting it in our little private chat on Instagram that for right now, does seem to be oh wait is it frozen nope it froze already great we'll see if it catches up if it doesn't that's that uh oh there we go yeah it's back it's great <laughs> unbelievable uh try that again see if that works somewhere oh whatever uh yes uh yeah uh, Kiki right now is uh, is one of two people that have signed up uh, so far. Uh, we need at least one more person. So please, if you are wanting to jump into uh, some creepy horror gameplay, that is uh, that is one of the uh, best ways to do so. Uh, the other uh, announcement we have is our uh, one shots that we have every Saturday and Sunday. Uh, besides this week, I will be off this week because I'll be out of town. Um, uh, but uh, every Saturday and Sunday, we're hosting a uh, a one shot ability uh, opportunity to be able to kind of play uh, with me as your DM and possibly some of the players uh, joining in at every uh, every once in a while. Um, this month, I um, we've been doing some kind of like old favorite stuff going through. Uh, and uh, this month we are doing a couple of those. We also added uh, the Rite of Chakur, which was uh, one that I've never actually put out for the public to play, um, which is a level 12 pit fight, gladiatorial games uh, level fight, uh, where you all are enclosed in a space and having to, uh, having to do, uh, you know, uh, just having to fight for your life uh, for, and for money. Um, so good old fashioned. Um, that one's super fun. And then also our Golden Lion Heist, which the first one we did was with these lovely folks. Uh, it was, I think it was actually called the Silver Bear Heist at that point. Uh, but we, so we changed that around. But the same kind of rules apply. Uh, it's a fun little uh, somewhat Ocean's Eleven style uh, uh, heist thing that's uh, it's really fun to play. Um, oh, so, so we have that. Kids got a raise. Great. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. It's the Golden 
one now. Uh, truly, it's uh, I will say above board, it's just that because I have that mini and that just made sense rather than having to make a new one, which just changed the name of the game. Um, but uh, yeah, um, it's super fun. So you should check that out. Um, also, just a bunch of other uh, one trusts that we have. Uh, and then uh, the following month, my plan is the following month is to start up our uh, drop in drop out campaign for Humblewood. Uh, so for those, so for those who are interested in uh, joining in that, uh, please feel free to stick around the next couple of weeks. Um, find out more info. So I'm gonna put the uh, link for those one shots here in the uh, in the private chat. Again, also it's in the video description. And then uh, lastly, good. Looks like we may have gotten back up to speed. I should think of Instagram. That's kind of freaking out. Weird. Oh yeah, it's definitely Instagram freaking out. I wonder if it was be better to... Okay. Alright, I have an idea for next time. Uh, sorry for those who are trying to watch on Instagram. I don't know if it's going to stay like that or not. Uh, but yeah, uh, so for the rest of you, uh, lastly, if you are, uh, if this is your first time here and you're wanting to support the channel, uh, or you've been watching for a while and want to support the channel, uh, best way to do so is to subscribe on, uh, YouTube or Twitch, uh, helps to kind of up our YouTube algorithm, uh, YouTube and Twitch algorithm, uh, to be able to kind of have this come out to more people. And, uh, who knows that might mean, uh, I, uh, I did kind of hint at an idea of like, maybe when we reach like 300 subscribers, maybe we'll. We'll celebrate for a free with a free one shot. Um, so uh, please uh, feel free to do that. Uh, also check out our social media stuff that is on. Uh, uh, we just putting the link tree in for our Instagram and TikTok that we have some occasional behind the scenes stuff of uh, set pieces and uh, specific uh, really just like cool things that have happened in game. So. Um, I believe that is it for my announcement. So before we get into tonight, we need to know where we left off. Royal Scribe, Lurian, would you please do the honor? Yeah. All right. So we started the session with Guar entering into some light uh, and Saren and Wilbur watching as he does this. Uh, Guar immediately feels a sense of relief when he realizes that he's looking at Celeste, his patron, who left him um, and is now back. Um, so... That um, feeling of relief quickly goes away when <laughs> Celeste explains to Guar what they've been up to. And um, basically we find out that Celeste is um, bound by some sort of, you know, agreement or whatever with the Celestials and um, she, or they, is it she or they? I think she, they, she slash they. Okay, okay. Either one. Um, and anyway, she, she's the one that told them about um, Broomhilda, um, said that she had to, uh, she didn't have a choice, and that um, she's here to warn Guar, she's back to warn Guar that there's nothing we can do to save Broomhilda, and that in three months' time, they're going to come and take her. Um, which makes Guar reasonably upset, um, and he questions Celeste if, if she's there to truly help, um, or and basically trying to figure out and grapple with why uh, Broomhilda and not Tall. And um, it, uh, let's see. And yeah, Celeste um, goes on to explain some more of it. And Guar winds up um, very upset with her, but letting her back into his sword. Um, or not sword, your halberd. Um, so... Guar then tells Saren and um, Wilbur what's going on. He is devastated and sobbing and tells them everything. Um, and Celeste says in, in his head that it's better that Brimhilda does not know about this whole thing. But Wilbur and Saren both agree that this is not something that we should be keeping from Brimhilda. Meanwhile, Milo is in the kitchen just having a grand old time. Um, and Eldrin is, uh, hanging out in her temple when, um, she gets a message from Adim, um, that's a little confusing to her, but basically that there was a trident that was discovered from one of her guards and ha having to do with the Ixachil attack. And, um, she's like, cool, I guess I'll get it from you someday. <laughs> Bye. Uh, and then 
uh, after that, Eldrin reaches out to her mom, um, who is um, waiting to speak with the king about um, some about Grinchelli and and um, also Eldrin being wanted for crimes that she didn't actually commit. Um, and uh, Elrin makes it clear that she cannot go to see Karen Erickson until the next day, as she has plans to meet the king today, and it's taken a while to get this meeting. Um, and then Eldrin's dead brother, Kanos, appears, and they talk, and um, he is kind of like an ethereal, spirity kind of thing. And he is very encouraging and kind, but then Eldrin brings up what's going on with their other brother, Volmos, and Kanos is shocked that he, that, I don't know who the he is, if it was Persona or Volmos, not telling him what was going on and he agrees that um well basically says that he'll talk to persona and see if he can come back because he doesn't like that the nrs are being messed with on the material plane and now also you know in death um so then we go over to milo who (laughs) has some uh, uh, just a great time with marvin the house he tries to do the dishes and has to fight marvin to do so and then asks marvin if there's a sparring room um but is instead just directed to the armory um milo picks up a shield and halberd pretends he is guar and then uh proceeds to knock everything over on the wall which makes guar saren and wilbur all run in to see what's going on milo attempts to hide marvin directs guar to milo immediately and tells on him so um, Guar offers to train Milo with the halberd <laughs> later on. So then Norris pops in and tells Guar he was a little hard on Eldrin. So Guar decides to go find her. Um, so let's see. Oh, actually, first, Guar decides to go find Eldrin after Milo and Saren both tell him that they did not follow the list and they contacted people off of the list, just like Eldrin did. So Eldrin and Guar then have um, a really nice heart to heart. Um, they kind of hash things out. Um, you know, they tell each other that they're like, you know, brother and sister. It's very beautiful. Um, and then, let's see. And then Guar tells Eldrin about Celeste and Brunhilda, um, which leads to them bringing the rest of the group to the temple so that um, they can let Milo and Noros also know what's going on. Um, so once everyone's brought back up to speed, we um, we discuss maybe Wilbur... Uh, using his newfound ability to be able to dream and and speak with people to talk with Riley to see if we can find a way um, to break this news to Broomhilder without her exploding. Um, Because if that happens, she's going to be taken sooner. Um, And then let's see. Uh, Oh, so Eldrin wants to have a sleepover with Wilbur, which will be really fun. Um, And then the the Mongoose crew have a very wonderful dinner and um, they talk about Gerard and Eldrin also asks about her and Norris's wedding, which I'm assuming they filled her in on. We didn't have to role play that. And then um, they have their dinner and then Saren goes and speaks with Huxley in the sending room. He's super cagey about who he's with. He um, asks Saren specifically if it's safe to talk and then Saren assures him it is (laughs) and he proceeds to talk about the rods of destruction and where one is located. Um, then, El- uh, not Eldrin, um, Saren finds out that Huxley is actually with Alistair and, and the Unearth Arcanum, and, uh, he says that he is going to Darius Wharf and he needs to stay with them because he doesn't think that they can figure things out on their own. Um, and so Saren then comes back down and tells the group that all that stuff and, um, which leads to Brumhilda waking up and saying, who has what and where about the rod. And um, I don't think we know it's Alistair who has it, but that, that that group does. And then we end with a scene of a room with a figure sitting at a table chained and writing in a large glass vat with silvery blue liquid. You got it. That none of us see. Yeah. Uh, oh, there was one thing I wanted to make sure I was understood above board. I think it was in the beginning of your notes. Crap. Now I'm already forgetting what it was. Was it uh, my talk with Celeste? Yeah, was it Celeste? I, I, mean, I don't think it was Celeste. Can you read through? I'm sorry, this is so dumb, but can you read through the beginning? I think it was right after Celeste. Okay, hold on. I have to go back. Um, it was it was it when Guar told Saren and Wilbur everything, um, or after that? I don't remember. 
It may not have been important. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to think. Celeste t- says it's best not to tell Broomhilda. Wilbur and Saren think that Guar should tell Broomhilda. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eldrin gets a message from Adim. Is that it? That's what it was. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, no, I think it was something before that, but th- but also that. Um, uh, maybe it was that. For the record, I will say, like, player interaction-wise, I know that the reasoning on Adim telling you that was not because it was like, hey, come collect this weapon. It was okay. more in the idea of, like, what they know and what has happened. I will say Adim did not specify where they were when it happened, so there's... there's Yeah, that that, 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 that was the thing that I was I was going to revisit because he, he talks about the Ixichitl attack, which he should not know about. Um, right. So... Yeah. Um, Eldrin put a pin in it. Yeah, I just put a pin in it. Uh, pin cool. In it. Well, with that, uh, we will move into our... Uh, it's the evening now. Do I have a forest evening thing? I don't think I do. So I, so I kind of have to do this one. Sorry, gang. Okay. So we uh, we come into the scene here where we see a uh, the the war room uh, filled with uh, like full on uh, lost boy style massive amounts of food. Uh, I guess the difference is that it would be real food, but um, uh, massive amounts of food from end to end. Uh, we see Guar. Uh, I think pretty much in like the back half of like finishing off some bacon and eggs. Um, uh, everybody's kind of sitting at the dinner table, except for Saren, who had just kind of uh, burst out of the sending room, came out to everyone and said, uh, basically the group that Alistair's with uh, seems to have the rod. And that's when Broomhilda came out and said, what? Right. And we see Broomhilda bursting out of the door, uh, coming out and going, what do, you, what do you mean? They, what? Who's? What? Someone well, clue me in. Uh, hold, hold on. There's a lot to clue you in on. We just found out this. So I turned back to Saren. So you're telling me that Alistair's group has a rod of destruction? Do they know that? They do now, but I guess when I don't know where they found it, but they didn't know what it was. Um, Huxley called them unlucky idiots. Uh, <laughs> so, who's, yeah. Who's, they... who's Hux? Oh, yeah. Right. Brimhilda, are you feeling better? Yeah, how was your nap? I don't know. My dice was cocked. Hold on. Okay. Um, uh, um, uh, fine. Um, you look well. Okay. Um, War like timidly holds up a couple slices of bacon. Marvin made food. Right. Oh, okay. So it's six six fifty then already. Well, it's a little later than that. We asked for lobster and bacon and eggs that he had to make. Okay. Actually, uh, I haven't got my lobster yet. You see her kind of absentmindedly walk over, takes the uh, takes the bacon out of Guar. She's staring at Eldrin, who's just talking. <sighs> okay. This is okay. So this is good news. This is good. This is good news. We have a, a, a friend, ally, right? I mean, or a bunch of unlucky idiots. He did give us some information on um, who we can reach out to in Ariscar. Um, his parents, his father, actually works at the school, um, so they can be. We just have to be very careful because you know we don't want to get any other people unnecessarily killed. His father works at the school? Yes. Okay. Okay. 
All right. Um, well, I mean, you know, oh. if he works at the school, it's probably... He's either in on it or would know who would be. Can you confirm to me so that I can finish doing what I... Going down the list of people that I need to talk to, that that room is secure? No one wanted to listen to me, but I was very concerned after what happened with my misjudgment that it could be tapped into again by the wrong parties. Uh, yeah, I guess, um, you know, I can probably just, just, I'll, I'll, I'll rework, I'll rework the room. Uh, I'll just kind of dig deeper and just make sure that there's more glyphs of everything. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, before you do that, Broomhilda, have you, you haven't eaten in quite some time. You should probably I have food right here. It's just, That's it's... two strips of bacon. You need more than that. Please, you need your strength. Uh, only a persuasion check. Not twenty. <laughs> She's gonna eat. Eat that bacon. Uh, they nat twenty. She walks out of the room. Just kidding. Um... <laughs> I needed a 21. With a, with a nat 20. Yeah, you need a nat 21. It's uh, for 29, by the way. 29. 29. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, okay. I didn't roll a nat 20, so. Uh, she. All right. Um, yeah, I guess. All right. I'll just. Um, yeah, okay. She sits down. She seems like just like. Uh, in the space of like uh, similar to someone who has woken up with their head just popping off their pillow recognizing everything they need to do in that day um, so so my okay. wife on a Monday yeah um. <laughs> um, I fill her in on um, um, at least like my conversation with like Kanos and that we might have help from that side with Persona as well interesting okay and then I say, don't worry, I didn't, you know, go off of off script. I didn't use your your room. You kind of just appeared to me in the temple that I created outside. You made it. She gets up from the table. Uh, she pushes pushes away her food, gets up from the table, walks over, looks out the windows. Okay. Aldrin. You were asleep and Marvin could wouldn't let me wake you up or talk to you. I couldn't know if I could trust the room anymore and no one else would listen to me and at least Marvin how far temple. are we from any civilization family encampments things like that and uh Marvin takes a second and just it seems the closest civilization is about 50 miles south there's also a small goblin encampment 35 miles southeast. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. No, nope, that's fine. It's a little big, but okay. What? What's while big? The, while this is happening, Guar is, paying, Guar is paying attention oh, to what, what? what uh, Brimhilda chose for food because he wants to know what her favorite food is. <laughs> uh, cool. Roll me a... Um... You don't need to roll me anything. You're looking at her food. Hold on. So like I, I was having her. I was that's the DM moment of like I need a moment to think about this so roll yeah. something yeah, um, for sure cool you uh, you see on her plate uh, is uh, for the most part like relatively mostly vegetarian a lot of greens things like that um, uh, and you see uh, I think you see I would say you see the inner workings of what would eventually be a BLT okay um, so yeah, no, I, I say, I say to Broomhilda, um, well, as I was saying, I create the temple because it can't be scryed on or listened into, um. Right, but there could be people that are this... passing by that could see it. That's all I was saying. But... Oh, okay. Well, they can't go in it. Or sneak some more bacon onto her BLT. She she definitely doesn't see. It. She's staring at the window at the at the right. at the at the temple. And... She needs she needs more B on her L or BLT. Okay, all right. 
Uh, okay. She looks at you and goes, uh, impressive, and walks out. Or kind of like walks okay. back to her table. Thanks. Uh, looks at the bacon I'm like, Thanks, Gwar. I, I just thought your your BLT needed a little more B. I just thought you'd enjoy it. Okay. Oh. Uh, what else? Uh, Alistair confirmed that um, that they're well. He told me where they could be holding Bolmos, and then also um, made it very clear that um, they're is a brother, I believe, but he doesn't know his name, or um, he hasn't interacted with him. Um, they didn't seem to really completely understand how dangerous Grinchelli is. This, um... This Huxley that we know about, I'm... I'm I recall there was there was some sort of conversation that may have happened. None of us are true fans of her, but you think Huxley might know? Uh, the brother's name? I mean, Possibly. at least just I mean, yeah. I, I can I, ask. It's worth a shot. Yeah, I think Saren, if you want to. I, I, I well, wait, no one goes into that room yet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Why did no one listen to me? What do you mean? I, I told them all not to go in there and do all the sendings, but they did it anyway. That's why I built my temple. I have to point out Milo being unbelievably good in this. Just the, like, shut up. <laughs> sh- 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 shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Stop it. Oh, okay. All right, great. So, so uh, no one else caught the... I, 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 does it matter now? Does it matter? Should I even check to see if it's? Yes, I'm not going to reach out to Honoria if I'm not sure that it's secure. Did I everyone just... use it? <laughs> everyone Looks along the no table at everyone. Whatsoever, because I. It's not about having problems, Guar. It's about someone listening in. Well, no one felt the need to chime in on mine calls because I stopped. They don't the need to if they're looking in on you. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Can... Yeah, unbelievable. I'm just saying, I, you haven't heard Wilbur saying a word right here. Wilbur, have you heard everything that's been said? Uh, you mean right now? Yeah. <sighs> okay. All right. Well... How would we know? Is there any way to tell any magic you can do to... It's extremely difficult to find that out. I mean, it, no one should be able to get in here. So if whatever... Whatever is in Eris... Whoever is in Ariskar that is able to... Interrupt a conversation... In someone have else's to... head. I need to, the answer might be upstairs. Um, What's upstairs? Uh, my library. I'm just seeing I'm if I can. I'm not trying to be nosy, sorry. No, it's fine. It's, it's. Um, okay. All right. Uh, well, uh, just uh, just keep uh, just keep me informed. Uh, you see her take her plate and just start to kind of like walk up the stairs. Uh, Wilbur and I are going to sleep in the temple tonight. Just so you know, it's n- no offense. It, 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 we just haven't had a sleepover in a while. I don't laugh when I say it. <laughs> Or looks at Noros like you. Um, you see, like Brumhilda kind of like turns at the stairs, looks at you, Eldrin, and looks at Wilbur, and just, like there's a moment of like 
there's a clear moment of wanting to chastise that comment but you see her face kind of like just slightly softens a little bit okay i understand you're probably safe in there who knows you're more safe in there yeah okay yeah true you're probably right okay all right i'll be in the library Mm -hmm. um okay i know I know I've been a little standoffish lately, so I understand that, and I'm sorry if that has... I'm not star- I'm not sorry. You, you guys can stick up for yourselves. Oh, feel free to come in to ask me anything as long as it's pertinent and important. When pertinent and important. Be- Look over. It looks over at Gwar. When do you think I will be able to use the sending room to finish... I'm not rushing you. I, I just want to know if I should plan on doing that tomorrow. Um, I would say that's important to get done, right? Yes, but it can wait. Um, I mean, honestly, if we wait till tomorrow, it might be better. My mother's speaking with the king tonight, so we won't have any relevant information until tomorrow anyway. Um, Elgin, roll me a persuasion check. Okay. Uh, um, that would be persuasion and minus one. That would be a seven. Cool. Okay. No, it's fine. Um, yeah, you're right. This is stupid. Why am I waiting for that? Uh, you see, uh, um, uh, I'd like everybody to roll me an Arcana check in this moment. <laughs> Where's my Two. dice? Two. 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 Nice, nice. Seventeen. Seventeen. Not bad. There's another two. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> two crew. Two yeah. crew. Two. Sorry. The two bros. <laughs> oh no. It's not that big of a deal getting just done. A nat, a nat one. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> Wilbur, you go unconscious. I'm just kidding. Um, no. Uh, Thanks, cool. Sarah. Jeez. Uh, you, uh, I want to actually take it from the twos, uh, starting from that, because uh, that's really fun. Uh, you uh, are looking at Brumhilda, and all of a sudden, you don't see her. She doesn't blink out of existence there's no like you don't see like a pop there's no like teleportation sort of thing all of a sudden she's just not there um as you're like looking around i think with the two what you see is you see her her clean plate on the table um did did we just lose time uh elgin what'd you get two Three of you got two? Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, Mike, what'd you get? Two. Two. Oh, right. Wilbur got one. That's right. So it's literally yeah. just just Saren. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, cool. Thanks, Saren, Saren, you feel a weird vibration. Um, and uh, you notice that um, I think like in like a heavy sort of like full on rogue perception thing, um, I think you notice that the, uh, the, I think there's like, a, there's like a full just turkey in front of you. Um, uh, you notice that the turkey seems to be, uh, like, like, you happen to notice that there was like a, there was like a drop of like, like grease that was like on the skin that was like dripping down. And you just like, there's a moment where you just like, you kind of like clocked it as like one of the many things you're seeing all at the same time. Uh, you notice that you look at it and it looks like it has moved from this, from like, from at the top of the, the turkey to the bottom. Uh, with the 17, you don't know what was cast, but after that we see, uh, we see Brumhilda coming out of the room and going, <sighs> uh, coming out of the sending room. 
Okay. That's gotta do it. That was a Ew. lot faster than I thought. What did? Yeah, what happened? Did... What? Uh, I just it's. Uh, I just I just. It was just a. It was just a. It was just a. It was just a spell. You're fine. Everyone's fine. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm just exhausted. Uh, Again? You, you just woke up? What happened? You just used an immense amount of magic is what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Well, can, you know. Do you want another I can make you another sandwich. Actually, yeah, I'm starving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I see her go and sit back at the table. Uh, she has cast some sort of version of Time Stop. So can I... Should I finish my list now? Uh, I mean, either... If you get interrupted again, please let me know, because then that means we just can't use that room. I've done everything I can. Okay, I mean, I think the only way I'd get interrupted again is if I've reached out to Volmos, and I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel hungry again. Are you sure you're okay? Hey guys, I'm good. I'm fine. I just, I can't, you know, after a while, just as getting asked that question over and over again, eventually I'm going to say no, because I keep getting asked that question. I mean, I understand, but as someone who is always saying that she's fine, myself, I'm talking about me, I'm always saying I'm fine when I'm not. I can kind of recognize that in Elfram. someone else. Is this a, okay. All right. I'm not, this isn't uh We're just really worried about you. I don't need you to be worried about me. I don't, and this is the first time she's actually ever like flipped out on Wilbur. I don't need you to worry about me. It's it's fine. I'm going to be able to be fine. If I'm not fine, you'll know. I, I sidle up closer to Wilbur, and I look at looking at Brimhilda the whole time. Yeah. Hey, hey. Wilbur's ears are gonna drop forward. Love that. Hey, hey put my hand on Wilbur's shoulder. Hey, you have lots of reasons to be mad at me. You don't need to be mad at him. He's he, he just cares. You, you want to yell, yell at me. It's all right. I think we're all very tense right now. I, I gave you that tea and you passed out. And even though I didn't mean to, I didn't know that it was going to make you pass out. But, you know, if you want to be mad at me, go for it. It's fine. What? Yeah. Marvin said that if, if you had some tea, you would feel better. So he conjured some tea and I gave you the tea and then you fell asleep. I am taking two big steps away from Guar. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm walking a little bit away too. You are not, you taking, see care, you're not taking care of yourself, Brimhilda. We need you at full strength. I keep saying that to you. Uh, Brimhilda, who is not very tall um gets up from the table slowly and there's a moment where there's like a shadow that seems to be cast over the table that is like larger <laughs> than herself you fucked up man you should never told her i got this I got outside this. <laughs> outside now she doesn't want any witnesses you can Don't use go my to a second location buddy like <laughs> You see her get up and she wa she walks uh, to the space where like the ladder thing goes and just disappears. Why I, did I follow. You tell her. And I say, I say, I've got this. Okay. At uh, least she's not mad at you anymore. Good luck. So well, hopefully, I'm not. Hopefully, I'm not bearing it, a third know. brother. <laughs> we'll find out, I guess. Eldrin's so traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if Norris just looks at me like, oh god, like Like, honey, you can't just say those things just out. Uh, Am I supposed to keep it inside? Conceal don't feel. 
Yeah, that's classic Guar, right? <laughs> classic Guar. Just hold it all in. <laughs> so yeah, I follow. Oh, I'm okay. so scared for you. Uh, as you as you walk out, it's very dark. I believe. Uh, does Guar have dark vision? I do. Okay. I just didn't want to yell. I moved to. I moved towards the window so I can watch. I'm dark I think everybody moves towards the window. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, I'm standing on sure. someone's shoulders to look. Mm-hmm. Milo's fully sitting on the steps, like out of sight line of everyone. As I... soon as it got tense, he like <laughs> he he scooted to he scooted to his like safety zone. Like on the steps, like of the like rope ladder coming down. No, no, no! Like, like going upstairs. Like he. Uh, oh, so you just moved so further I'm, I'm away. Pi- You're like, I'm picturing no, I'm like, good. I'm picturing like young Milo when like Willie, uh, Willen and Rosie would would argue. The oh God, that's so like terrible. Ta- he'd like take his plate and go to the steps and just Love like that's get so out of the sad. way. So Milo's. Everyone's eating, parents eating have thought at steps. some point in life it's okay. <laughs> Clearly, my inner child hasn't healed. All right. It's fine. We can talk at the break, guys. <laughs> Therapist mind comes out. What's your co- what's your copay? <laughs> I'm not on the clock. This is just a friend who happens to be one. All right. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of. Okay. <laughs> Guar, you you go out. You don't see. You don't see Broomhilda anywhere, um, which is like it works as dim light for you, so it's it's just hard to see. You know? Right. Um, you do hear a voice that goes over here. I follow it. Cool. Um, don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, everyone at the window. I'll say this because Elder was the first one to do it. Um, Elgin, roll me a roll me a stealth check for the group. <laughs> Is it with disadvantage with my? Armor? I can't Kayla do it. I'm gonna say it's not it's not with disadvantage <laughs> right? with your armor class. I'll say <laughs> you don't have disadvantage, but it's definitely not Saren's at all. Um, <laughs> because the question is without trace. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the question is yeah. Uh, I will. There's also some issues with actually being able to cast inside the mansion as well. Oh, um, good point. No, so no, if no. you do if you do in that instance, you feel an immediate counter spell, and you're not really sure where that came from. Okay. Um, uh, um, yeah. All right, you also, go, I will say also, Marvin can't help himself. The 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 house is actually tilted a little bit closer. <laughs> also, in this situation. Can I guide myself? Yeah, I'll allow that. Okay. All right, the guidance we got two guys, so that means I get Great. to add plus three, two and eleven, so fourteen. Fourteen. I'm trying to see if I can read lips. Uh, so if I see their lips. <laughs> what if she just goes, thank you so much, I needed that. And then they just kiss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you ruined it. <clears throat> uh, okay. Uh, I will say sorry one second I hate that it does this now uh, Guar might as well handle this now give me a wisdom saving throw <laughs> cool. Oh, boy. Cool, 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 cool 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 level plus 10 so oh 26 cool awesome uh, with a 26, you, uh, move through this area, this, like, kind of, like, heavily wooded area, um, and you 
notice that like the corners of your vision start to blur a little bit and you can tell that a spell is being cast on you but it's being done well yeah actually i'm gonna say it's being done to distract you from the real spell that's being cast on you so now i need you to roll me another wisdom saving throw with disadvantage your roll originally was enough to allow you to make this roll. So disadvantage, uh, 13 for a 23. Okay. Guar, you notice that uh, the as the edges around your vision blur, you start to notice that the trees look like they've gotten taller. You hear footsteps, but for some reason in your current state, it sounds like a giant's. I figured she cast Yep, I'm tiny. Uh, what you could uh, face me as my regular self? You say that. Uh, give me an. Uh, give me a perception check. I'll say as you. Okay. Um, that is a ten. Uh, with a ten, yeah, with a ten, you say that. Okay. And you hear these footsteps approach you see the robe um, for all of you that are watching out you see all of a sudden a blackness come over everything in that uh, in that area uh, a like magical darkness essentially um, full on like level of like pulling a shade down um, <laughs> as you may see clear clearly she doesn't want you to see this um, oh, or are she's, you she's good Quar, you see Brimhilda's face lean down as big as a as big as you would imagine a god-like creature would look to you. Uh, to kind of give equivalent of the idea of that the size is, if you if you think about the idea of like the size affecting you, you're about the size of her fingernail. Sure. Girl, honey, I shrunk the kids situation. Yes. I don't need your help. I am not the one you need to be saving. Why are you your so loud? Uh, your job. You notice that she continues on as if she couldn't hear you. Right. Okay. Um, I'll argue, I think at this point, because you rolled a 10, which wasn't that good, but at this point you recognize you're not making any noise. Okay. The only thing that will keep you and I working together is if I know that I am in control not of you not of them but of me she gets even closer you take that away from me again you'll stay like this I want you to take some time contemplating that as she walks off. Guar, for an hour, you are a spider. <laughs> Don't come near me. 
Uh, you see uh, Brumhilda. Uh, you hear the sounds of Brumhilda walking up the rope ladder. Um, and uh, uh, you hear her coming up uh, as you all have time to look like you're not looking out, like you weren't looking out the window. I'm going to read a book. I didn't see anything. Eldrin's I'm gonna crawl awkwardly up a tree. sitting on Norris's lap, like just right, like she just didn't know where to go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Saren's back at the table with her journal, pretending like she's writing in it. Yeah. I'm crawling up a tree and making a web. I know the female spiders do that, but I don't care. Cool. I love it. Yeah. Um, awesome. Uh, so, ironically, uh, give me actually. Let's do this. Uh, give me a survival check. Great. A bird's gonna eat me. Well, all these trees here are massive, um, so they're also even bigger for you. I mean, you can uh, hang out in my temple. Uh, that's a 12. A 12? Okay. Uh, with a 12, you spend the next hour trying to find a tree that you think you could climb up on, um, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, I just wanted to like, spider it up for, all, for an hour. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I think there's like a, there's like the realm of like, I, cause obviously Guar has no idea how long he's going to be like this. So mm -hmm. the, I like the kind of like, all right, I guess I'm going to learn how to be a spider for a little bit. Um, <laughs> but uh, you never successfully get to a tree, unfortunately. Um, so in the meantime, does she come back up? <laughs> she, she comes back up and like, it's enough time for you all to like, just feel like, like to like <laughs> be back in your space if you wanted to. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> He's fine. All right. Well, on that note, I'm going to go use the sending room. Okay. Great. I am. I'll be in the library. Um, as you, uh, I'll say, like, so, sh so her having to walk past the table. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say, uh, my uh, is everybody at the table? Milo's not. Milo, where are you? No, Milo hasn't. Milo's still in his safe safety corner. Are you on the stairs, like going up to the second floor? Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. I'm going to be so, on the floor in a corner just reading whatever closest book I picked up. Uh, roll me a d4. <sighs> Two. Um, that was the number. Uh, actually, technically it'd be two or four, but two, definitely. Um, so you, uh, she walks towards the stairs. And Saren, you feel this no matter what. But Wilbur, both Saren and Wilbur feel this at about the same time. There's this weird... I think there's a there's a moment that when when uh, Brumhilda walks past you all, there's a very sort of extreme level of like static electricity, as if she's giving off her own sort of like like her own like EMP sort of level. Uh, it's not magic per se. It's just best way to describe it, it's just energy it would make sense to call it magic because magic is kind of like is phrasing this in sort of this ineffable thing but Wilbur when you feel it I think you'd roll me a I think it's either an insight or a nature check my pick I'd say either way you have advantage, though, yeah. Okay. 
15. Wilbur, this electricity sort of feeling you would be familiar with in the primordial sort of sense of what you're able to uh, to do. Oh, no. Did she fuck up? Uh-oh. She better be on her Joe has behavior. no idea what you're talking about. What are no, you talking about? No, like if she, did she fuck up and piss them off and they're going to collect her earlier? Uh-oh. No, it's just energy passing okay, by good. you. There's, she didn't do, yeah, all she did was cast a spell. Um, there's no there's no level of her. She didn't explode. Okay. That didn't happen. It's just it's just a pulse. Okay. Um, Wilbur, with a 15, I'm going to say that that's, that's high enough of a level that you recognize that even though the best way to describe this is feeling like it's it's like electricity sort of thing, 15 is enough to, to, to know that it is not like anything you feel from a primordial frame. This is something else. You're also a ranger, so you have some, some connection of just magic in general. It doesn't feel like that either. It's something else. Uh, uh, Saren, roll me a... Yeah, I think roll me a perception check. Uh, 25. With a 25, this is this is like, you know, it uh, perception is based supposed to be based on like a sensory sort of thing, but it's not sight and it's not hearing. It's more like a sense of feeling. It feels like it's arcing randomly she uh, continues to pass by both of you and walks up the stairs where Milo is sitting literally in her way Milo what do you do um, Milo's been a uh, uh... Milo's holding his plate, and he's gonna um, get up and um. Hey, hey, from Hilda, I know. Move. I know. I know it doesn't feel like this, and I know nobody said it, but you Move. are doing. You're doing really well. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for providing this space. Please move. You got it. You feel that same sort of energy when she walks by. Roll me and know your truth. This is a little oh, wait, bit no. harder because... Take that back. That was uh, uh, 28. 28. Okay. There we go. This is a little bit harder because I think it's something that is that has not been personified in conversation. Mm. Although it somewhat has. I guess when she's formulated the idea of like, I am in control. I am fine. Mm -hmm. It's not until that moment that you can know absolutely for sure... When she's, the first two times she said move were indignation. The second time was fear. She is not 100% in control. Mm -hmm. She continues to move past you. You feel that same sort of weird pulse as she Walks to the library. Close the door. That was Wilbur, weird. Did, did you feel that? Yeah, it was. I don't. 
It's really weird. I it felt electrical, but it didn't feel like anything I've ever experienced before. Did I already leave before that all happened? I don't think so. I think you were just on the opposite side of the table. Okay, because I was wondering if it felt like before the waterfall exploded. I'll give you a roll. Uh, give me a... Give me a perception check. Um... Twelve. You're not sure. Okay. I don't think she's okay, but I'm certainly not asking her. No, we need to leave her alone. Mm -hmm. Milo. What? Did you did you feel anything? I mean, she walked right past you. I mean. Yeah, it was like, I mean, just really mad. I, do you, I know she said he's fine. Do, do you think she killed Guar? I don't, uh, no. I don't, no. I mean, she said he was fine. So, she also says she's fine. Well, Mar Marvin, I think did she kill him? I believe the mistress wouldn't ever kill someone who was just trying to help. Are you saying that for your own benefit? It's funny. I remember that there was several people that were over on one side of me. Trying to survey the situation. So you tell me. I don't know. I think she needs to be left alone and I need to use that room. Marvin, so. she's not okay, is she? I don't think there's an answer. Well, that's an answer. <laughs> Saren, while I'm in there, shall I just reach out to Huxley and ask for the name? Uh, you, you can try. I okay. frankly don't know if he'll answer you. Yeah, it's worth a shot if he doesn't. I suppose you can come back in here. Yeah. Sounds good. I mean, it would just be fun to irritate him regardless. I, so. I agree. He he wanted me to tell Guar that his armor made him look fat, and I told him I wouldn't do that. And I just That's not funny because it's not true. It's... Yeah. I don't understand that humor. He's, he's a dickhead. Okay. Fat but shaming is not cool. His no. head is shaped like a dick? I didn't notice no. that. He's an a asshole. No, that's not gonna work either. Um, he's a terrible person. That we can agree with. That we can agree on. It's Sometimes. like, it's, it's like Noros finally speaks up. Noros is here. Uh, it's like, you know, if someone like <laughs> says <laughs> says you have like a face like a hippocampus. Oh. Okay. I mean, but some people really do have a face like a hippocampus. I mean, being a dickhead, I don't see how that is an I mean, it's, his face isn't it's not shaped like a dick. Right. Well, but we like, don't know that. You haven't really seen all the dicks in the world, though, right? So quite possibly it could I be. I mean, yeah, I guess you're right. I Triton one could be different. I look at... Actually, there's no humans here. I say, and none of you are humans, so... You've got me there, Wilbur. Y y you do. The only person we could probably ask right now is Brimhilda, but I don't think she would be appreciative of that question. 
this is this is a crazy conversation we having right now. Um, okay. I, <laughs> Uh, there's a moment where you all actually recognize that there's a there's a level of like Triton not understanding, and then there's also Eldra not understanding. As like as like Noros is on board with the rest of you, like knowing what that ma that means. Yeah. But then Noros even trying to explain and Eldra being like, "No, I don't get it." Like, oh, okay, all right, well. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm curious. I mean, listen, it got really are, tense. Are genitalia break up. different for for? You know, obviously it is for, for some creatures, but huh. it's probably something they should teach us in school. Eldrin, weren't you going to go talk to people? Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. And I look at Norris and I say, Do, would you mind joining me? me? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. I mean, last time I was in there by myself, something horrible happened, so I don't know. I'm a little... She's not going to hurt you while I'm here. No, I, no, I mean, something horribly traumatic happened and the person who's torturing my brother spoke in my mind. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can, Honestly, I can help with that. Uh, it gives, gives I, Saren, a, it gives Wilbur a look like. And I say, sweetheart, if Vermilda wanted to kill any of us, I don't think there's anything you could do to stop her. I mean, knowing what we know now about her, if she wanted to kill us. Wilbur, let's um not do that here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, knowing what we know now in the sense of she's a hothead. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have cut you off. You're right. Yeah, I mean, she may have just killed Guar and we didn't even hear a scream. So I don't know. True. It might not be a terrible way to go. That's all I'm saying. True. Well, all right. We can. I mean, we can sit here all day talking about dicks and people killing and all of that. But I, I guess I should go use the room that she wasted all of her energy on fixing. Okay. Bye. Nope. <laughs> uh, Gwar, give me a luck roll. <laughs> How's that web coming? <laughs> I just want Gwar to. I want him to get up here 14? and then Wilbur yeah. scream and squish him. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, 14's good. Uh, you. Um, you do notice there's a. Uh, there's just, you hear the sound of like this like faint like. Gah! Gah! As a bird happens to like land extremely close to your area. Um, but with a 14, you're like, what do I do? What, do I just, should I move? Should I not move? Is this what spiders normally think of? And then before you're able to even react, the bird takes off again. Um, whew. as there's a moment where like, where like Gwar's like, I, I don't know if Gwar thinks about this was like, this must be why they stay still. <laughs> I'm learning so much about spiders right now. Yeah. Thanks, from Hilda. Uh, great. Seriously. Uh, Saren, Milo, and Wilbur, give me a Constitution saving throw. Sixteen. Six. Ooh, I saw that roll too, Wilbur. Not great. Who missed someone? Oh, 14. Uh, if you didn't 14. Hear me. Okay. Uh, oh, also Quar. Give me a con save. Sixteen. Okay. Did Marvin poison us all? Same thing that was in the tea. Okay. Okay. 
Thanks. Algen, you go into the sending room. Okay. Um, so Eldrin will uh, sit down in the corner um, and think to herself. Actually, she says that loud. We really need to let tell Hilda that we need like a table and chairs in here. Um, <laughs> uh, give me a uh, give me a investigation check or Arcana, either one. Um, I'm gonna do uh, investigation. I mean, they're the same. Eight. I'm not Eight. rolling hot tonight. Cool. You got. I it. never am. Yeah, you walk in and they're like, did she even do anything? Yeah. Seems exactly well, the same. Okay, well, I mean, I suppose this is better than being limited in words. Um, okay. Uh, Eldrin closes her eyes for a second and thinks about her dad and says, um, Father, before you say anything, I am in uh, this really powerful room so we can talk back and forth as if we're in the same room together so I made it back safely from the Shadowfell if you have any requ- any questions regarding our time there, Zara should be able to fill you in I would say if he hasn't already done so but I'm, I'm assuming he hasn't cool uh, I say above board um, Lorraine can you give me just a list of like the, the people that you are going to uh, talk to right now um, my father, um, Elian, and Huxley really quick. Probably Elian, though, I sent you what I was going to say to her, so we can just not roleplay that. Because above you board, t- you said she probably wouldn't answer Were me you going to anyway. talk to Alistair? Oh, not yet. We hadn't talked about that um, in-game, did we? Yeah, we didn't we? Didn't we just talk about the... We talked about it. We, we didn't, like... From Hilda didn't tell me to or anything, so I, I I'm confused. Sorry. Um, sure. Yeah, so I can talk to Alistair. Um, I just haven't figured out what to say to him. Okay. But yeah, I, cool. I, I can Br- do it. Yeah. From Hilda didn't say anything in game about like. Yeah, we didn't talk about rod. it in game, so. I think yeah, okay. We didn't talk so about I, the rod at all. So I think what, it, and I apologize, I didn't make that clear, but uh, uh, I think from Hilda. Yeah, I guess I didn't say that. I apologize. Brumhilda would have said, like, okay, all right, cool. Well, let's, you know, like, we need to talk to someone. Someone talk to him like we need to do. And then that's what have been. The, that's when the sending room sort of concept would have been like, oh, the sending room might be compromised. So I, th- so I, I apologize. I think in her, this is a weird thing to say, but in her head, she thought all that and then was like, well, if the sending room's compromised, we can't do that yet. So, I mean, we could just say that she hasn't said it to us yet and we haven't talked about it because Eldrin would have some things to say about it before agreeing to reach out to Alistair again. Okay. If she thinks yeah. she's... If that works, because... Yeah, that's fine. I think... Okay. All right. So, yeah. So, I, I did that introduction to my dad, and I, I give a pause to give him room to say hi before I'm going to... Cool. Uh, yeah. I think um, for... So, going into your dad saying... Last, because last we talked, I told him I, this might be the last time we, you know, see each other. I might die, so I love you. Was that okay? Uh, did you you just greeted him for now, right? Yeah, I just greeted him. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I have a lot I want to say. I just figured I'd give a pause for. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, um, uh, Eldrin. This is weird. Haven't had to deal with this in a little bit. Um, so I just talk. Oh, am I wasting words right now? Talking is. No, I just said that you weren't. Um, we can talk as if we're in the same room together. You can interrupt me. I can interrupt you. I just can't see you. It's a very powerful um, spell that is happening right now. Um, okay, great. Is now an all right time to discuss some very sensitive and important issues. Um, sure, hold on one second. Let's slight pause. Okay. Um, shoot, what's on your mind? Okay, well, as I said, uh, we just made it back from the Shadowfell. Um, 
It was very difficult. Uh, we faced Tall, albeit um, not in his true form, which is even more terrifying because he was inhabiting the body of a dead man and was more powerful than anything I've ever seen. And I truly fear what that means if he actually is able to fight us in his true form. Uh, with that said, um, we're working on preparing for this inevitable confrontation with him. And we need to know what Honoria can offer in this fight. Um, I know I don't need to remind you what Tall and his followers have taken from us. Um, but... After seeing what he can do, I fear for our people and I want to, I want to ensure they're not just in this for us in the sense of, I understand we want revenge, but that can't be the only reason that we bring our people into this fight. Um, I don't know. As much with, as I would love to use the, oh, sorry. With all due respect, uh, we can interrupt each other in this, right? That's the yep. main, okay. With all due respect, Elgin, uh, let me worry about uh, what the people should be fighting for. I say this because personal qualms aside, from my understanding of what we've recently dealt with, uh, this uh, this tall has had a hand in this, correct? Yes. Yes. That, that was my next point, that I just want to I've been very mad for a very long time about what has happened to our family and I just, I don't want that to I, I I don't know what, what I'm trying to say is, yes, make it clear that Tal was behind the Ixitil uprising on top of the death of Olmos I mean, I'll leave it up to you whether you inform them that his followers were also responsible for mine and Kanos' death um, I know probably Kanos is not a topic that you want to discuss since he was exiled uh, and the optics surrounding that aren't very great but uh, I, I don't I'm, I'm rambling I'm yes you're I'll leave it up to you you're, you're better at that than me um, well uh, also I mean the, the two sides of that sword is that I, I also it is my decision so might as well be coming from me anyways um, well what I, want, what I wanted to ask you is if you could coordinate with Astalin, Zaris, and Catherine regarding this fight and let me know what support we can expect. I know Catherine's barely had time to come into her new role, if that's even been a, made official, but we need to prepare and have the clarity for this fight as well as um, support on all fronts. I trust Aston's martial prowess and that of her soldiers, and regardless of my misgivings about Zaris's mental state, he is brilliant and will be able to prepare the mages for what's to come. So if you could speak with them and then, I don't know, get back to me on that. Mm. Something is coming. Of course. Uh, as far as um, Catherine, I... I... Uh, you can hear kind of a little bit of a smile on his head. I wouldn't worry about it. We had a recent council meeting where she uh, was very strongly worded in her feelings of the future of Honoria, uh, giving a sense that a lot of the council, she didn't directly point the finger at me, but many people on this council are not putting the work in that they should. Uh, it was uh, slightly out of turn, a little bit um, say borderline uh, inappropriate, but impressive. I wouldn't expect anything uh, less of her. Um, yeah, great. She's really impressive. Um, sorry. I wasn't trying to... I thought you were... I thought... Full dad mode. I thought you two were friends. Father, we haven't been friends for years. But you... But you would hang out together all the time on the field, and... That was... Like... Two and a half years ago. We... We haven't... Okay. Oh, that's not, okay. That's not what this is about. Well, then, she. We had a falling out. Sorry. I guess I... I guess that's on me. Um... 
I, I will say, I mean, I, some people on the council would not be, uh, not be ha happy about me saying this, but it, it is nice to have some fresh blood on the council. So, uh, she seems to be eager to right any ship that's in the wrong way. That's good. Well, um, in regards to Z your friend Zaris, don't call him my friend. I thought you two were friends. Father, don't. <laughs> okay, that one. That one was a joke for sure. Um, I I am aware. You have no idea. No, you do have an idea. You work with this man much more than I do. He is infuriating. Um, Eldrin. Uh, he hasn't been able to make the last couple council meetings we've had. Um, gotten a miss of saying just uh, feeling under the weather. So I haven't Is sent for him immediately. In as far as I know, I would imagine. I guess I wouldn't put it past him to put to have missive sent from some unseen servant level bullshit thing. But I I'll have more information tomorrow. But because uh, I will specifically send for him. But uh, has he not been? Has he been having his lessons with um, Navis? Or do you not know? That's right. He was doing lessons with Navis. Um, hmm. Yeah, I guess I could ask Navos. That makes sense. It'd probably be good to check in with them. Okay. I hear you. I'm just saying that th this isn't the time. Um, okay. So, you will talk with the council and let me know yes. what we can expect? Okay. Yes, can you tell me, uh, can you give me a timeline or a when and where? Well, um, we're not quite sure yet. <laughs> um, Fair enough. We're, 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 we're having some people meet us uh, north of Grifton, but I don't know if it's wise to just continue amassing uh, an army without a destination right now. Um, we do have plans to go somewhere that I'm not going to mention just in case anyone's listening in on this. That in should the... be. Oh, okay. Well, good to know. Uh, in the cases of war, my dear daughter, they're, uh, amassing armies could be in preparation for anything up to a year normally, so uh, that is... Okay actually part will... for the course, believe it or not. Yes, okay. Well, the other important thing that I can't forget to mention or ask is, um, I don't know if they've already reached out to you, but the Erico Grins of Fara uh, should also, if they haven't, be reaching out to you. Um, Guar tried appealing to them, uh, but they said they would give their final decision to you. Wouldn't that be a Zara sort of thing? Uh, they said they wanted to speak with the king. Everybody wants to speak with the king. Uh, very well. Anything I need to know as far as uh, these? Uh, I mean, I would say Zara's can fill you in on some stuff, but I, I don't know what's going on with them. They're, they're very proud. Kind of their pride might rival Anorians a little bit. Uh, they don't like things that aren't their magic. So I'm not sure how they're going to reach out to you, but um, they were not pleased when I wanted to... They, they're they weird. That's what you need to know. Okay, they're weird, so be on your guard as far as customs go. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Do you have any books on the Eric Oakens? I'm sure somewhere I was hoping I could get the cliff notes from my daughter. They didn't seem to like me very much. Well, that's impossible. I've missed you. Uh, 
he's going to keep pressing about, and we wanted to role play this, but he's going to keep pressing about questions about the Aarakocra on like how they okay. handle certain things. And it's I'll enough. I'll explain the whole situation. To him, yeah. Like, yeah. It's enough that I think, uh, roll me an insight check. Um, that would be 28. Jesus. Okay, cool. Um, I think, wait, no, 26. 26. Okay. Math. Not good uh, enough. Still really good. No. Uh, with a 26, you get the edit. You've mentioned a couple times, like, Zaris might be able to have this information. Um, you get the feeling from this part of the conversation now at this point, your father's actually a little worried about Zaris. So the last time I saw Zaris was when we were leaving with Broomhilda and he was supposed to be going home. Mm-hmm. I'll also say this with a 26, uh, there was a certain point where you, you did ask me, does, uh, this was sessions ago, does Zara still have a beard? Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's what my thought. Um, okay. Zara, uh, um, hmm. he might be laying low. There might've been some things that happened to him in the shadow fell. Okay. So maybe if you go seek him out privately instead of in front of the council, he will meet with you. Uh keeping to that twenty six, you hear you hear your father go Okay. Well, I will I can set things aside tonight. Okay. Um yeah, I mean, I guess that was it. It's <laughs> I forgot Norris was just sitting in this room with me. <laughs> I think he's just full on like cross legged, just sitting, just yeah. Um, yeah, he's just staring. Yeah, he's like staring around you, like he's not just staring at you. But yeah, no, I know. I feel that he must be so bored. Um, so you know, Eldrin just says, <laughs> you took him away um, from dinner too. I think there's still I like did, a yeah. I did. Uh, so Eldrin says, um, okay, um, there's probably a lot that I'm missing and we'll need to follow up with you on, but I can reach out to you tomorrow and you can give me an update, I suppose. Um, is there anything you want me to say to mother? I'm going to be reaching out to her tomorrow as well. Hmm. Uh, uh no thank you okay i love you i will i love you, you. Well. okay uh this is nice this is good i can you know uh there's extended conversations with my daughter while i'm working this is good uh i also i would just say you know possibly you know office times would probably be best well, I mean, we're kind of in the middle of, like, trying to save the world, so I feel like, you know. Oh, okay, so that trumps running a whole kingdom. Yep, got it. Yes. Also, I'm your daughter, and I'm your favorite child, so. Oh, now I miss the sending. Okay. Where's that 25 words or less? As a joke, oh. I, you can't hear it. I guess this is it's hard to tell I'm joking. Okay, well, I missed the sending too because now this is awkward. Just ha ha what do you, how do you how do you end? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Bye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> We're just gonna just <laughs> stop it. It's like, God, oh, that was weird. Um, yeah. Something's definitely up with Zaris. Uh, I figured what? It out. I don't know. My father says that he's not coming to council meetings. I mean, he's he only been back for like, what, a day? How many council meetings? He said there's been two. How many council meetings does he have in a day? God, this is gonna be awful. I don't want to do this someday. I mean, it's kind of anyway. more time over there, so there's a... True, true. Um, I don't know. I think it has something to do with him looking super old right now, and maybe he doesn't want them to know that that happened to him in the Shadowfell. You don't think, like, 
He's dead? Uh, no, I, I guess just like... How old is he? Oh, he has got to be like... Well, Wilbur said that he met him 150 years ago and he was like, I don't know, like a young man. So he's got to be pushing like over almost 200. Eh, it's probably nothing. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Um, I, you seem really bored. Do you want to... You don't have to be in here if you don't want to. It's okay. There's a... <laughs> I'll roll for it. Yeah, okay. Cause, well, there was... There might be cake. Okay. I mean... You can go get some and bring it back. I in just here. really missed. Like, okay, yeah, yeah. I guess I can do that. Yep. Okay, I'll, I'll reach out to Huxley, see if he can. Okay. Give me some information. All right. All right. You want me to get you a piece, or? Uh, sure. If I don't like it, you can just eat it, right? No, I. I'm having my own piece. What? I'm. Okay. Well, then you just, not, you just don't like land yours. food? Just say that you don't like land food. It's fine. It's, it's fine. It's just, I mean, can't I just have a bite of yours? I'll just make sure I get a bigger piece then, I guess. Uh, I'm just going to watch that. <laughs> uh, I think we're going to pause here for a second to be yeah. able to kind of come back to uh, to this. You see Noros comes back out. Um. Marvin, uh, can you bake a cake? It's in front of everybody. I like that he said there might be cake, knowing full well there wasn't, and he had to ask for it. <laughs> and he had to ask for it, yeah. Yeah. Are you asking, seriously asking for a cake right now? I. Why? Okay, you and Elgin just. Are Have a good time in your some your sleepover. So thank you. Are you jealous? I'm not. No, of the sleepover. No, trust, trust me. We've had our own. Nope. Um. Okay. Yeah, Marvin. Uh, bake a cake, please. Sure. Right away. So. No one's seen Quar yet, huh? Not a sight, nothing. Okay. Well, how long does it take to bake a cake? Anybody know? I'm not a magical house, so I couldn't tell. I, I eat I mean, grass. usually about an hour. Yeah. An hour? God. Do you think it's going to take him less time because he's a magical house? It's fine. I'll go outside and take a walk. It's fine. I'm just gonna. I'll I'll check and see if I find Guar or run into Guar. It's kind of dark out there. Like, make noise when like stomp wildly. Like, just make noise while you're out there. It's just it's. Saren, you're like, you're, well, you both have relatively good survival, but Saren, I just imagine you're like, your wilderness level, like, like, like elf, you hear that statement. Okay, okay, yeah, I guess I could. Looks over at Saren. Yeah, no, no. You'll alert one of those places 50 miles away to our location, or I don't know. Okay. Don't stomp around. Maybe you shouldn't go outside. Okay. All right. Fine. I'll just. I. <laughs> I think he just goes back in. I, he just goes right back in. <laughs> <to Elf's room. laughs> Let me know when there's cake. Um, he just goes back in. Um, Gua, roll me another luck roll. Okay. A strange man. That's a fifteen <laughs> this time. Fifteen. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna contest this roll. Does Wilbur right. think he's actually jealous that that Wilbur's sleeping in the temple with Eldrin tonight? <laughs> yeah, he's a jealous ass <laughs> husband. I love it. Uh, 
great. Uh, Guar. Roll me initiative. Oh no! Let's go. Oh, okay, God. maybe Nora should have went out. <laughs> Twelve. Cool. <laughs> What's that? Uh, you hear this like weird sort of like chittering noise uh, as oh, you no. are as you are deep in the brush. You try to kind of like run up to the top of the grass, and you see eyes that are like that sort of like reflection to like the back of their pupils, um, as you see a ginormous looking rodent coming your way. Uh, it's your turn spider? before it's theirs. You're still a spider. Uh, what kind of powers do I have? You're a tiny spider. Right. I mean, like, do I have, do I have am I fast? Can I get away? I'm, I'm trying to dash here. It's a role playing game. You can do whatever you want. All right, fine. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna dash away, uh, cool. to find some cover. Ideally, behind like a rock or something. You got it. Uh, so, uh, m using like the dash action and your movement speed. Yeah. You got it. Okay, cool. Um, you move about three feet. Sure. Um, it is now the creature's turn. Uh, an 18 definitely hits. You you feel a giant fang sink into the top of your head, and you feel yourself just... And you go right back to a human, and this thing gets terrified and runs off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I won. You won? I had to what? do it. It was just what too funny. What the fuck was that? <laughs> it runs off. Get out of here! Yeah. <laughs> do we hear the yell? Yeah, you get. I'm doing the like... thing that Milo said that uh, that he, uh, that Noro should do. Get out of here! Yeah, it's a f like I think it's I think well first off it's a raccoon and like when you when you like try to like kick at it to like run off, I think it's possible that that thing will never will probably die because it'll never attack anything in its life in fear that it'll turn into a full human. <laughs> Yeah. Poor raccoon. But that's uh, for another campaign. That's for Humblewood. <laughs> that's for Humblewood. Uh, <laughs> you killed Anders. You killed oh, Anders. Jesus. How dare that's you? That's so sad. No, I traumatized Anders into never eating again. I into didn't... into starvation. Yes. Uh, I I don't know. I think Guar... Uh, the, would be mad just because he was just like, oh, fuck, that was close. But at the same time, he's also just kind of like, oh, Brumhilda. Um, <laughs> like, yeah. You were, you were a spider, so you have no, no, like, idea how long it's been. No, no clue. Yeah. She just <sighs> full on left you out there for dead. As a mm -hmm. spider, and yep. you're just like, oh, Broomhilda, it's okay. He she understands Polymorph. He gets I don't know it. if he, he does understand that. Polymorph. No, she think... does, I'm saying. Oh, she does, 100%. Yeah. She made her point, you know. Um, so I walk back to the house. Cool. I'm tromping back, um, and I climb the ladder, and I'm like, how long was I gone? Uh, like an hour. That's it. I I'm looking at my wrist. The woman doesn't wear a watch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a a Timex just appears because you're in a magical house. Uh, <laughs> <Have> a Seiko. <laughs> uh, a little calculator watch comes yep. in. Yeah. Um, no, it's been about 40, 45 minutes. I was fighting for my life out there. What happened? We didn't see you. Do you? Uh, I'm pretty sure I was a spider. Ugh. Well, I'm standing right here. No, like spot. Ugh. You don't like spiders? No. They're quite helpful to have around. They catch all the pests. They are a pest. No, they Anyways. catch the pests. They catch the fleas she, and the mosquitoes and... She turned you into a spider? 
the guard just like finally realizing how fucked up that is like she turned me into a fucking spider we need to not do anything to upset her because she needs to not blow a gasket here on us okay I almost got eaten She this, left you out there for dead, basically. This raccoon bit me, and then I turned back into myself, and it ran away. I you think should I probably it. go get that checked out. The raccoon? No, the the bite. I'll, I'll say you do feel like just this tiny pinprick of a of a like a teeth mark, like right here. You be aware of you know, a raccoon. You know, Guar, you got to be careful with getting bit on your head. Marvin, do you have any? Uh, immunizations of any sort uh currently busy baking a cake you you're an omnipotent house you can't do two things at once thank you wilbur i can do a million things at once i just wanted to make you feel awkward i was just a spider how awkward how much more awkward could i feel i'm a house marvin how do you, marvin how do you deal with spiders as as a house Spiders know not to come up here. You got damn right they do. <laughs> uh, cutting out from this scene, we go back into Eldrin. Um, yes. Uh, Eldrin. So, okay, uh, do you want to roleplay me reaching out to Elian, or should I just send you that? Because I can just skip over to Huxley. I'll tell you. I'll tell you straight up above board. Elian does not respond. Okay, that's fine. Then you know. You know what I said. Uh, mm -hmm. asking for help and all that stuff. Okay. Yep. So, <laughs> Eldrin... Eldrin looks at Noros and says, how do you start a conversation with someone that you, you don't like? They Did didn't have cake. Hi? Yeah. Okay. But he's okay. gonna make well, it, so... Oh, that's great. What were you saying? I was saying, how do I start a conversation with someone I don't like? Like, do I just say, hey, Huxley, like, what's up? God, no, don't do that. Oh, okay. I, I'm glad you came back in because I wasn't sure and I was I, I was going to go with that. Yeah, that sounded weirdly like land flirty. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, don't do that. Because why would I be reaching out to him for no reason just to say what's up? You're right. I'm. That's weird. That would okay. have been a right, we really weird thing for me to walk into, too. I just, I'll be honest. Okay. Um, that, was a, that was a joke, dear. It's fine. It's, I'm just kidding. Oh, sorry. Uh, that sounds hilarious. Um, okay. <laughs> when I he says know. it's a joke, too, he also looks away, uh, and the camera just sees him like, that was terrible. That was like, that was not a joke at all. Okay. Put yourself together. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, Eldrin. Just, just say Huxley. Okay. I don't know. Huxley, it's Eldrin. We talk, or are, you, or are you even going to respond to me, or do we do Saren and make me wait for a long time? Eldrin, what's up? Uh, I look at Norris when he says what's up, and I'm like, he said what's up. <laughs> anyway, uh, Eldrin, uh, <laughs> do you... As Saren filled us in, uh, you're traveling with Alistair and something with a rod and all that grand stuff. Yeah, yeah, I am, uh, I am traveling with Alistair. Okay. Um, how, did he fill you in on what I told him about Grand Jelly? Uh... Let's say no. Oh, God, I have to do this whole thing again. Um, okay, well, we found out that there's another Mortimer. I wanted to know if there's anything you can tell me about that. Names or anything. All Brimhilda has is that Grantelli had a brother who died 20 years ago, but obviously that's not correct. Yeah. 
Um, I saw him once. I was uh, in Ariscar handling some things. Um, here, give me, uh, I'll, I'll bear back. It's a pause. Yeah, I saw him once. Uh, I, I, there's no way for me to prove to you that, or I, I, I guess I can, I can't say with a hundred percent certainty that it was this brother. There were rumors, and I, for the life of me, could not find where those rumors started. So, uh. I know yeah. to have you. What can you tell me about Raylor? Why would you ask me that? Well, because first of all, you made it very clear that he was probably the one responsible for Grandchelly finding out about our plan to rescue Beldum. And second of all, I am pretty sure he is responsible for whatever is happening to my brother Volmos right now. I believe you met him briefly. And Huxley knows, Huxley met Volmos briefly. I remember Kanos and him, they didn't like him, right? And then, as far as Huxley knows, Volmos is dead. Right. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, well, um, it's funny. I know, I guess I can't say that I know for 100% certainty, but I, when I said that he was probably at fault, that may have been he talking out of turn I'm still pretty upset about that whole situation so um, uh, it's doubtful that he was the reason that uh, that Beldum's dead or that they knew that you were coming um, I, what do you, what do you, what, what do you, why, what do you want to know? I want to know what he's capable of, what his experiments were, because whatever he is experimenting on or was doing has directly impacted my family and severed the soul of my brother, almost. He, uh, he's this is so fucking stupid. He's, uh, He's a smart, uh, charismatic elf. Um, I never got the feeling that he would be interested in taking part in anything that would be nefarious in any way. I... I guess I just don't understand why you're asking me about this. That's not, I don't really, 
the 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 chance of him being involved in this is I told you why you're not listening to me so I'll say it again my dead brother was brought back to life somehow with half of his soul and is now kidnapped in an air scar and Raylor is responsible for whatever it is that how do you happened know, to him. How do you know that he's responsible? Because Saren saw him in Honoria. Or at least saw she thinks it. she did. Okay, well... I... And Volmos confirmed it as well. Raylor said that he was helping him. And something about liquid and that sh- stuff Volmos that you is had. dead. I don't understand. What do we... Yeah, I thought he was too, but apparently he's only partly dead. So... I just... Okay. I guess I thought you might have been a little bit smarter than this. So you're listening to an undead version of your brother and then a woman who would like to see Raylor. I mean, I, I, yeah, I thought I saw Raylor a couple times too after things went south. I would appreciate it if you don't. I'm sorry. I have it confirmed that I don't know how it's possible, but let me explain it to you how it was explained to me. My brother's soul is split. Something ripped him from his eternal peace, whatever you want to call it, and put it in a body that looks exactly like him. And if I don't figure out how to reunite them, he could be lost forever. And I am pretty sure that Raylor had something to do with it. Uh, rolling precision check. Uh, I'm gonna guide myself. I'm gonna use uh, inspiration. <laughs> okay. I didn't do any better. Um, 11. Sorry, I wish I could help. That part of me is in the past, and it's just hard to recall. Can I tell if he's lying to me? Uh, go ahead and roll an intent check. Oh, my hand, I rolled that before. Um, 26. Uh... I ruled to myself that he has disadvantage on this roll, so he got a 23. Okay. Uh, he's definitely lying. Eldrin sighs and oh, she's going to try a different approach. Any information you have, I would appreciate. I already lost my brother once. I don't want to lose him again because you're too afraid to dredge up your past. But if you can live with that, then fine. I don't... I'll figure it out on my own. Why you fucking people are so so stuck in the past people on the ship you if you want to survive you need to be able to move on from those things that is I living could. that is surviving I, is is having experiences and moving on from them you think i don't want to move on from uh, my brother's death i did i wanted to i tried to and i couldn't because guess what your friend or who, whatever he is to you did something to him and brought him back and brought him back wrong. Fine. 
when I met Raylor, there was a clear sense that he was a He wasn't an inventor. He wasn't a technological savvy person, but he knew magic. And on my side, I, the spells that I know are fully based on the pursuit of science and technology and that's it. So when he presented me with a schematic that he had of something that could help boost the abilities of the things that I was working on. I did what any scientist would do. I just proceeded to move on to the testing phase and that's what we did. And we made some pretty amazing things together. Things that I know now I can make without those materials. We I don't know how he got to this point and I'll be honest with you at the time I let certain things get the best of me and I went along with things that I probably wouldn't have normally the the things that he made needed needed something that was sometimes tricky to get and for us we were able to do so without having to resort to crazy circumstances which I wouldn't have have, have gone into um, but realizing now Some things we were using involved blood. Who's blood? Anyone that had any sort of magical nature in them. This magic is in the blood. like I said I was short sighted but the one thing that made me feel okay with working with him was that I never told him but I could tell that that wasn't his handwriting he took it from somewhere. Did the... Did it... Were there any seals on it? Did it mention anything like the Salamance? No. Anything obvious like that he would have... He presented it like it was something he was working on. And what was the end goal? knowledge I mean it was it was it made everything that could be wrong just immediately fused to being right it was we built machines off of this we 
built we built good things too we built things that were essentially pieces that were that were able to do a simple healing spell regenerative regeneratively he He had built something originally that was meant for me and the idea of getting my arm back. I know a cleric could do that for you. No, I've tried. I could do that for you. I said I've tried. But I also refuse I refuse to build it. I refuse to take part in it. Because he directed it towards me and giving the idea that this was we were working on other things and it was the idea that giving this any weight I was fine. I am fine. I've didn't need that and I told him that and things got heated and I told him in less than exemplary words that I didn't uh I didn't need to grow anything back and maybe he was maybe he was just trying to see if something was there if I would change if something else was here and he just wasn't satisfied with what he had in me and he uh, he left the next day Did he leave before he almost was killed by Grinchelli's people? No. What's the, um... How can this machine possibly, it it can generate matter from nothing? Not from nothing. Everything has to be a transfer of energy from some source. So it was the concept that he was explaining to me was that we just needed some of my blood and I explained to him that I wasn't magical in any way so this wouldn't work and he went on and on on the idea that if he couldn't build it without me he was stupid in the idea of like being able to being able to kind of build anything of a of of, of physical he was a, a, a theoretical guy I just is this related at all to the the liquid or the substance the silvery stuff that was at the charred bard yeah that would have been the I assume the important ingredient So you don't know if he finished your designs? His designs. I didn't take part in that. 
I showed him why it wouldn't work from a engineering standpoint. But they're just outlines. If he had another ingredient, that ingredient being magic, I mean, honestly, like I said, if, I mean, I guess, I suppose you said it didn't work on you, but I can literally regenerate a limb from someone who's lost one with the power of persona. Technology and machinery and magic and all of that and blood together, I can't... um, My Archmage and I were trying to figure out how there could be a body for half of Volmos's soul to inhabit when I mean, not to get crude, we we made sure the body was buried, and it is. Volmos is dead, but he's also not. I don't know. Um, thank you for... Wow, I feel like I'm... I, I, thank you for sharing all that with me. Um... Yeah. Uh, Don't ask me again. And I'm... Okay. He didn't... He didn't do it. He didn't do what? It's part of loving someone is knowing what they're capable of. And I was short sighted, but I'm not an idiot. He wouldn't have made that. Not for that. I don't think he had a choice. I don't think it was his right mind. I don't know if that makes that any better for you. But... I'll keep that in mind when I meet him someday. Do as you want. Can we be done with this conversation? I'm working yes. on the bird. Okay. Um. Thank you. Sure, whatever. I hope so. Um, you sever the connection, which gives you a sense of, like, recognizing that there's a possibility that it's, the connection is going to go on for as long as you want it to in this room. Mm -hmm. Um, So, as you, uh, as you stop, you see uh, Noros is standing next to you and looking in your direction and looking at your face. What does Noros see? Mm Mm-hmm. Eldrin looks, oh, it's like a mixture of, so I think he's, he, he, the conversation started off with frustration and anger because she was yelling, but now she just looks sad. Kind of sad for Huxley. I think the and, phrase, loving someone is knowing what they're capable of, sticks in your brain. Yeah. You okay? This is Norris now. 
I just never thought I'd actually feel bad for Huxley. But I guess he's more complicated than I thought. As we zoom out and away from this room, Wilbur, give me a perception check. Twenty, not natural. You're at the dinner table, and there's a there's an itch somewhere in your body, like your arm, your back, whatever. Um, and you scratch, and as you scratch, you notice that you must have been scratching for a little bit. But uh, You look down, and you see on the floor a uh, surprising amount of your fur. We're going to take that moment and take our 10-minute break. We'll see you guys in 10.
Okay, we come back. Uh, Wilbur, you, yeah, you notice like a small tuft of fur on the, uh, 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 first off, uh, I'll you know, give you kind of just a little bit of uh, agency here, at least on this. Where do you imagine this is? 
Where I'm losing fur? Yeah. Right on one of my ash cheeks. Cool. Love it. Love that. Too bad you're not wearing a dress. Yeah. To cover it. Too bad I gave it to my mom. And I think like for the for the is the, for this scenario, are you wearing are you wearing pants or are you like Donald ducking it? He has his cloak, his long cloak, right? Yeah, I have my long cloak. The poop's gotta go somewhere. But you, so you have your long cloak and a shirt. Yeah. Cool. It's adorable. Yeah. Love it. Um, I mean, Donald Duck rules full apply here. Um, so, uh, so we're good. No one else thinks that's weird. Um, oh, Winnie the uh, Pooh. Winnie the Pooh, baby. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So Wilbur, uh, you notice that. Did I catch something? Oh, don't worry. It's natural. Uh, It happens to the best of us. Why am I losing fur? Are are you you okay, Wilbur? No, I'm losing fur. Something happened when Brunhilda walked by me? Marvin, do you have any adhesive that we could we could use to put the fur back on? Currently building a cake. You don't like build to a cake. You make a cake. Wilbur's fur. If that's all right. What happened? What happened to me? Why am I losing fur? Are you in pain? No. I'm itchy. Oh, I think you're quite nice. I don't think it's, that's that's the problem, is it? Oh, you said uh, itchy. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> what? Wilbur, give me a give me a medicine or an insight check. Medicine for oh, nat twenty for twenty eight. Okay. Uh, all right, all right, cool. Um, for twenty eight. Now that you mention it, Wilbur, you do. Now that you mention it, now that you think about it, Wilbur, uh, you do feel a slight sort of amount of disorientation. Uh, looking at Guar, you notice that uh, there almost seems to be like a like an interesting sort of like light. Uh, surrounding Guar in this moment. You can see the physical features and things like that. Um, Like, it's... It makes... Guar kind of has this weird sort of angelic look to him right now. Oh, I had a trip like this once. Uh, You did roll that 20, so I'm going to say uh, uh, the... It is not poison, but mechanically speaking, you are dealing with the effects of poison starting now. Is it mushrooms? <laughs> like does mushrooms. anyone else look like this? Like, does Saren look weird or? Um. Hmm. When you look at Saren, I think you see. Uh, Well, you roll a nat twenty, Wilbur. So I think there's a there's a certain uh, a certain thing where as a DM I kind of have to just go with it. What does Wilbur think of Saren? That she's a mysterious and kind of creepy individual. Cool, awesome. But fascinating. Yeah. Um, Saren looks similar to like her like sort of uh, illusory sort of form when she hasn't killed anything in, in 24 hours. She looks something like that right now. But definitely like different enough that you know it's not that with the nat 20. Uh, something's weird. What can we do? I, I think I need to go find Brimhilda. Do you want me to come with you? Are you are you all right? 
I think she's about the last person that you're about the last person she would want to see. Oh, I was going to talk to her anyway, but I mean, no I can offense. wait till you're done. You, you take precedence at this point. I, I, we, we need to talk, but I, you can go first. You look like an angel. And it's very weird. Hey! What's that supposed to mean? We cut to Wilbur's sort of perspective of Guar, and we see Guar's hair is like floating a little bit. Um, uh, Guar, if you like, your your beard looks a little bit more manicured than it probably actually does. Uh, oh, for sure. uh, unless it's just like, um, unless you think you're just unshaven. I'm probably just unshaven. So truly, like, like I think you see like Guar looks <laughs> freshly shaven. Hmm. Why are you looking at me like that? What? I don't know. You look nice. I'm gonna go find Room Hilda. Stands up a little taller. Thank you. Uh, you want any of us to come with you? I don't know. I think I think I can make it, and I'll start like walking towards the stairs. Assuming uh, I can walk okay. Uh, you step down, and there's a, there's a, I think there's a moment. I feel like there's the opposite sort of effect of a nat 20 on this. There's a moment where you're over evaluating yourself, and you're like, I feel a little wobbly. And then you, you recognize, like, no, you're fine. You can walk. It's just, it's not affecting, it's not affecting objects as much as people. Okay. I'll uh, go up the stairs to try to find this library. Cool. You walk up the stairs. Um, you see uh, on the second floor, we know where the armory is. Uh, give me a survival check with disadvantage now. So Saren's, once he gets up the stairs, is going to start following him. Guar's going to stand at the bottom of the stairs because I don't want to cause any ruckus. 21. With disadvantage? Mm-hmm. Nice. Probably another constitution save throw. Great. Eighteen. Not bad. Then 18, there's a sense of, we'll keep that natural 20 medicine check going. You feel that you're developing a headache. Uh, I think I'll yell, Wilbur will yell Broomhilda's name just to see if she responds. No response. Oh man. Saren, roll me a perception check. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Cool. Uh, at this point, at this point, you notice that Wilbur looks to be a little bit more disoriented than normal. Very slight, just like uh. This is like full on like roguish perception, like seeing that like Wilbur is, Wilbur always has a little bit of a waddle when he's walking, but it's more of a back and forth than normal. Marvin, can you please tell Broomhilda I'm looking for her, but I don't want to come any closer. She is rather busy at the moment. This is urgent. 
I think Saren probably gets to Wilbur by then. Marvin, please go get Broomhilda. Very well. Opens the door to live. Wilbur, you look kind of wo wobbly, I guess. My head hurts. I'm busy. It's Brimhilda, urgent. Wilbur needs you. Something's wrong. Comes in, stands in the doorway. Okay. She's uh, <laughs> Wilbur. You thought Guar looked angelic. What you see walking towards you is a shining beacon of golden light. It, it's almost hard to see. You almost feel like you would have to shield your eyes. I think you actually kind of pull your hood in a little bit more. You see um, Brumhilda's uh, face seems to be stern, but almost oddly stoic. Saren, you hear. What's happening? Is he okay? Wilbur, you hear. What is ailing, my child? Does it sound like Broomhilda? Yeah. I mean, it's actually kind of hard to tell because you've never heard Broomhilda talk in that mood. So that's confusing. Um, why did you call me my child? That's weird. What? Wilbur, that's not what she said. What are you talking about? No, okay, I heard that's what interesting. she said. No, bring him in. Bring him in. Come on. Move. She, bring him in. Come on. She grabs Wilbur's hand and, like, pulls him along. Cool. Um, we're going to say uh, the door closes, and we're going to pause in that scene. Uh... Eldrin, was there anyone else you wanted to talk to? No, um, I need to talk, she needs to talk to her mother, but uh, I feel like that will be better after she talks to, the, her mom talks to the king, so she's going to do that tomorrow. Cool. Um, but she does, I think she's a little shell-shocked still, and um, she, she looks up at Noros and says, um, Tuxley's not a, a dickhead. As you all called him, he's just he's no, honey. Is the oh wait wait you you go, you said this to the group? No, I say this to Noros. I just Noros, a... honey. As we were explaining, like it's not that he has no. Like, a I'm physical... saying I get I, I get what you're. He's he's not just a jerk. He's heartbroken. Oh, okay. I mean. I'm just gonna be honest here. I remember what that feels like, and that didn't make me. Yeah. I, I guess everybody deals with things in their own way, but. Okay. Is this because of this Raylor guy? Yeah. Let's not um. Let's not really tell Saren some of this. Uh. Okay. We'll, we'll tell her the important stuff, but the feelings stuff, I don't think she needs to know. I won't say anything. I don't think he's ever shared that with anyone. Why do you say that? I, just the way he sounded. He sounded really broken. But at least I got some information that I need. I might have misjudged him a bit. Although he did hold a gun to a child's head, so 
I guess I shouldn't give him too much of a break. Yeah, that's a hard image to get out of your head. Yep. Uh, well, let's go find them. Um, I think Saren still has that... I think she still has a vial of that, that liquid from the charred bard. Maybe Brimhilda can identify it. I explained to him everything Huxley says to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Said to me. I, I, and, I, and, and I mean, like, everything to him. I'm, I'm going to explain it differently to Mongoose crew. Okay. I want to keep his... I want to keep... I, I feel, Yeah, Eldrin's like, he didn't have to tell me that stuff. And he did. Right, yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. I think there's a, there's a level of, like, secrecy and there's a level of, like, respect shown yeah. in that that's that's mm-hmm. more the that's more the latter yeah um, so yeah uh, cool you head you head out so, to the group yeah um, and it's just Guar and Milo yeah um, did Wilbur already go to the temple uh, I think I think there was something wrong with the grass Wilbur was eating. Um, he kind of wa- the fur fell off of his ass. What? Yeah, and like he kind of wobbled out. Of, I mean, he always wobbles a little bit, but like he, he like, I don't know. He didn't seem himself. He didn't have that confident butt. So not in a like has. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can you... Not in a like he wasn't. He wasn't like possessed. Not himself. Guar. Okay. Um, <laughs> Whoa, hey, too soon. Tall just broadcast an update. There's been an update with the wombat. He, he's, <laughs> he is missing hair from one of his ash sheets. You just hear Eldrin. this very loud. <laughs> Never mind. Eldrin looks mm. around and says, where's Saren? She would explain this much better. What is wrong with Wilbur? <laughs> there is no know. hair on one of his ass sheets. <laughs> so where I don't did know how he else go? To, to see Broomhilda. What? Okay. What do you mean? What? There, um, powerful being I, I upstairs. Push, I push Noros out of the way, and I like I go towards. What the hell? Uh, cool. And you I say, head my up the stairs. My best friend is hurt. Uh, you head up the stairs, uh, and okay. No. <laughs> I didn't like Jamie's eyes got so wide. <laughs> I had the we... same thought in my head. No. From Hilda, we... she's going surgery on me. It's fine. <laughs> I, we go in there and your brain's like, oh. <laughs> we cut, well, we cut to a point in the table that things start to become complicated. Um, I don't want to necessarily go into initiative right now, but it is a level of things are going to happen very quickly, so you want to move quickly. Okay. Well, I mean, this is for, this is, music. This is for Saren. Just, <laughs> this is for Saren specifically. Oh my God. Um, I from say, Hilda, this music, she rushes. Um, from Hilda, like, uh, directs Wilbur, like, okay, Wilbur, just get up on the... T- okay, all right, Saren, help me. Um, and... Uh, Brumhilda touches you. Uh, Wilbur, uh, give me a constitution saving throw. Quick, quick. Uh, 12. And get ready for to roll a couple of these. Uh, with a 12, you feel a moment where there's a almost like a feeling of like, 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 like a like imagining the feeling of like a blood vessel bursting near your head that's Great. the feeling that you get at this point as you Dangerism. as you are you are pulled up onto the top of the table at um at this point uh Saren, uh roll me a either a medicine check or a or an insight check i'm gonna go with insight since that's a plus 12. uh geez. that's a 30. This isn't nearly as uh, scary a music as it should be. Says you. What? I'm <laughs> scared as shit, right? Oh my god! <laughs> uh, Saren. 
you notice that Wilbur seems to be getting worse. What you what you see from your side is Saren, uh, excuse me, is Wilbur uh, is now seems to be, uh, his breathing seems to be a little bit more ragged um, as Brumhilda is uh, putting him up on the table. Uh, Brumhilda rolled at least to that and goes, okay, all right, okay. Um, uh, I'm sorry, there's probably something in here. Uh, just, just, uh, just keep him there. Um, and you see, her, you see her rush to the side of the bookcase and starts throwing books around, trying to find something that would describe, to figure out what's happening right now. Um, you hear her in the background muttering to herself, this can't be happening, not in here. That's not possible to happen in here. Um, uh, Eldrin, you are, oops, bad game. Um, Eldrin, you are up on the staircase uh, roll me a perception check with disadvantage. Um, that would be a dirty 20. Dirty 20. Okay, cool. Uh, with a dirty 20, you hear the sound of books being thrown off shelves. Um, uh, the door is closed. Um, I'm going to open it. Well, you're, you're, you're still pretty far from it. Okay. So I'm going to say uh, from this movement if you would like to action dash i would say you're in front of the door but that would be the sort of end of your turn in this uh yeah cool awesome um uh wilbur uh in this in this moment i need a charisma saving throw uh seven okay cool uh, with a seven, there's a moment where you feel like your your brain becomes hyper focused on how beautiful Brumhilda looks in this moment, and you cannot help but revel in the beauty and speak only on how angelic this creature seems to you. You are absolutely breathtaking right now. I okay. know what Gwar sees in you now. I shut up, shut up, shut the it. fuck up. Shut the fuck up, Wilbur. Shut up. Okay. Sarah, let me I think, just let me think. You're so pretty. Like you're just glowing. Sarah, you're I've this. never yeah. seen anyone glow yeah. like this. Saren puts his hand her hand over his eyes. No, I want to see. Okay. No, I just... no. Wil Wilbur, just just calm down. And then she yells for Eldrin. Okay. Um, uh, Brumhilda, Brumhilda immediately responds with, no, I got this. I can figure this out. Uh, Elgin, you're at the door. Nice. Uh, I hear Saren yell for me and I immediately go to open that door. Uh, the door seems to be locked. And I yell, Marvin, let me in this room right now. Marvin, open the door. I'm sorry. It seems that the... Well, Mistress I... of the house is in control, understands what is needing to be done here. Broomhilda, open Let the fucking me, door. My best you are beautiful. Uh, Algen, roll me an athletics check on the door. Okay. I am I'm so enamored right now. Hands um, that would totally be... still over his eyes. Uh, I'm peeking. 18. Other hand. <laughs> 18? Cool. Uh, let me roll the. Okay. Uh, with an 18, you are uh, trying your best to kind of pull on this door. And, uh, and it's a um, push. You, and it's a push. <laughs> um, uh, it would be a push, too. That's the funny thing. So, like, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. You, yeah, you walk. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, That's the issue. So. Uh, with that, uh, so 18 is good. Unfortunately, it does not meet the DC. So what I am going to say is that at that point, you recognize that this door is heavily bolted. You From could, I'm going to say, I'll actually put it this way. It's a success, but you need more than one. Okay. Um, I want to see room build up. If I, I can open it harder. Do a gust of wind. Would that work in here? Um, because it's it, so I know it's it. I, I was thinking, I'm only asking because I know magic won't work as well in here. But this is 
an ability the Tritons have, an innate one, the one I want to do, instead of just like a spell slot one. Oh, it's innate. Yeah, so, so this like is based on your Norris, race? Yeah, Norris can do these too. Cool. I would say there's there's going to be some resistance to that. Um, and also, I'm going to say that it was a full action to try to get the door open. Okay. Um, however, I will say Gust of Wind would be better than using your athletics check. We'll, we'll definitely yeah. say that. Um, or it gives you advantage on your athletics check. We'll say okay, that. that that's makes fine. Sense. Um, cool. Uh, so that was uh, Eldrin's turn. It is now... Uh, uh, it is now back to Wilbur's turn. Wilbur, you take 23 points of damage. What the F? Psychic damage. Um, as you feel yourself oh, being... Oh, wait, I have... Did, do I still have my studded letter on? Yeah. Yeah, I you have your psychic, psychic damage. damage. Awesome. Cool. Thanks so you take, uh, you take uh, 11 points, right? Yeah. Um... Can Saren uh, see that the uh, door is bolted, or is it like magically? It's magically. Bolted? Okay. It's magically bolted. Um, uh, Wilbur, give me a uh, at this point. Uh, give me a give me an intelligence saving throw. Oh boy! Oh god damn it! Six. Okay. <laughs> Sweet baby angel. Okay, um, with a, a six, um, there's a there's a certain point where you uh, you are looking. Uh, I'll say with that, um, Saren is covering your eyes. There's a weird sort of sense where you actually uh, like are able to use some of your like magic to actually kind of like push through that, like the second sight sort of like uh, thing. And you can see Brumhilda, and you realize that Brumhilda must have been around when you were being created. So Brumhilda is almost like your mother, in a way. Oh. Can I, like, I have this arcane eye spell. Can I just, like, cast that, and I can just be watching all of this unfold? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, Wilbur, I'm just the... looking at myself outside of my own body, like... <laughs> uh, because you Wilbur. failed by five or more, Wilbur, your damage is now being doubled. God damn it. Uh, Saren, it is your turn. Um, help me, Brimhilda. Help me. You, you, you probably hear, like, yeah, Eldrin trying to... I will say, actually, this is, a, this is a point of order, Wilbur, actually, a very, very important point to hear. You don't feel any pain. Oh, nice. Oh, good. Great. <laughs> um, Miranda, oh, great. Cool. I was only joking <laughs> when I said we didn't even hear a peep out of Guar. I will say at this point it'll happen. Uh, we'll we'll put it into the end of Eldrin's turn. But both Guar and Milo give me perception checks. Um, did Brumhilda? Yelled... Oh, oh, I was gonna say I yelled down at Noros to grab my bag. Twenty-two. Because it has my blanket in it. Okay. Twenty-two. Cool. Yeah, with a twenty-two, you. This has gone from like oh minor problems, whatever, to something serious is going on. Uh, Milo, what'd you get? Uh, 16. Same thing. Something serious is going on. Uh, you <laughs> both are at the dinner table. Yeah. Um, so you're starting your positions from there. But Saren, it is your turn. What do you want to do? Uh, did Broomhilda hear me tell her to open the fucking door? Like, uh, can I make a persuasion is, check or something? Brumhilda is nodding, but not. Uh, you just keep hearing her say, "I will figure this out. It's fine. I'm going to figure this out." Um. And I guess I'm assuming if Saren tries to open it, it's not going to open. There's no way she can like pick the lock or anything. Um, There's no lock to be picked. Okay. But uh, I mean, there's a there's a very there's a very obscure sort of level of like, what do you think your character would do in the situation that would help this situation, and and it'll always be a roll. She's gonna go over to Broomhilda, and like, okay. she's not gonna touch her, but she's gonna get like in her field of vision, like in front of her, and say, "Open the door. We need Eldrin. You can do your thing, and she can help." 
Uh, roll me a persuasion check with disadvantage. Oh god. <laughs> Sixteen. Sixteen. Uh, you uh, feel Brumhilda uh, looks at you, and there's a moment where now you... Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, there's a moment now where you oh see her eyes are flashing gold at this point as she looks at you and says, I need everything to be able to see. Excuse me. And, like, you could... I think you could tell she's trying to gently push you out of the way, but you get smacked and go sailing into the wall. Um, you take, uh, you take 13 points of force damage. Can I uncanny dodge that? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, is that round down to six? Uh, seven, 14, seven. right? Is that what you said? Yeah. You said 13. Uh, oh, I said 13. I'm sorry. Then six. Um, uh, it is, uh, I believe Brumhilda's turn. Uh, Brumhilda is, uh, recognizing at this moment. Okay. All right. I'm, you see, like in, in the, the view of what's happening, Brumhilda is actually like reading, uh, reading a book the way that we would like, that we would be looking for a specific page. Um, like she's just flipping through all, like just extremely quickly. Okay, not there. Just chucks it as hard as she can. You see it actually, uh, like at the like at the bookshelf, uh, in a, in a way of like trying to kind of just like have it like immediately go into the slot. It bursts right through the wall and goes sailing out. She does not seem to notice this at all. She turns and goes goes back to the other part of the bookshelf to go and look. Um, You're beautiful when you're hard at work. <laughs> so good. Um, okay, Elgin, is your turn. All right, I got to win this door. You got it. Give me an advantage on the athletics check. I wish I had knock. Can I um still guide myself? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, it's a one. That's not bad. Natural twenty. The natural 20, you burst the door open as soon as Saren uh is like collecting themselves going up. Uh I would say uh with a natural 20, you and Saren can react on the same turn. Which is now. Oh hey, um, Aldrin. <laughs> so I'm 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 assuming it wouldn't make sense for Eldrin to be walking around with her backpack. Like, is that a good assumption? That's why I said Norris get my bag. Like, yeah, yeah, you don't have your okay. bag. All right, okay. So because I don't have that, I immediately rush up to um, Wilbur, and am I able to do anything else? Because I have something I want to do. Uh, yeah, I'll give you that as a, like another turn for both of you. I um, I go up to him and quickly try and take in what's going on. Um, and if it you makes see, sense, you see Wilbur at this point is now shaking on top of the table. I'm gonna try to do remove curse on him. Is that an epilepsy joke on your own wife? Of That's course rude. it isn't. Of course it isn't. Um, um, and then the remove curse uh, should. I mean, at my touch, it all curses affecting one creature or object end. Um, but we've we've home homebrewed it or whatever, where like I take on some of that if it is a curse, like I feel it. So cool. I don't know so what here's what I think happens: you go to put your hand out, and Brumhilda, as quick as she possibly can, grabs your hand and goes, "I said I have it." I turn to her and I say, "Your need to be right doesn't trump." his life and get your fucking hand off of me. Uh, and Saren, I, Saren, it is oh, also sure. your turn. Which Eldrin never swears. Uh -uh. I love that. Uh, Eldrin, if you want to keep your action for remove curse, Saren, it is your turn. I do want to keep that action. She just, she is also going to yell at Broomhilda and say, Broomhilda, you need to calm down. At this point, gonna... there's, it's, it's clearly yeah. physical needs to be involved here. There's no way you're, you're, um, there's no I way you're, at, you're able to, I look uh, at Sarah and I said, if you can, if you can detain her, I can fix him and I can calm her down, but I need to fix him first. I feel fine. 
And you've seen come. Elder News Calm, calm Emotions, so that you, you might know that that's what she's talking about with Brimhilda, but her first thing is she wants to help Wilbur. Saren, you see an ally within five feet. Oh my god, she's gonna kill me. Um, sure. She's... The bomb goes off <laughs> while Saren's holding it. <laughs> she's gonna run up and, like, I'm gonna say, like, kind of sticks her scimitar, like, in front of Broomhilda and, like, pushes her back with it. Like, mechanically, it's, like, kind of, I'd say it's an attack, but she's, like, trying to, like, hit her back away from Wilbur. Does that I make don't sense? Think she's... Okay. So, I like, a, like kind of like a pushing that. attack, essentially. Yeah. I'll allow it. I like it. Um, cool. Uh, go ahead and roll an attack roll for me. Like, if she was a real Grim Reaper and had a scythe, she'd be, like, hooking her and pulling her back. Are you pulling her? Are you pulling her back towards you, or are you pushing her into the bookcase? Um, I guess she could, yeah, she could push her into the bookcase and go okay. this way. So, you so... To, you want to slice her. To imagine the, the, the realm... No, no, you're attacking her. This has to be an attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For, for the idea of, like, it's doing the full amount of damage that you want for this. Yeah. Uh, we're at that point. I'll just tell you as a DM. Um, so you see, uh, you see Brumhilda is... Is uh, Eldrin, as far as from the direction from you, from there, you're on the you're on the wall where the door was. Eldrin is uh, is or Brumhilda is between you and Eldrin. So, when you're attacking, you're going to slice and push her diagonally into the bookcase. Uh, go ahead and roll that attack roll for me, please. And just for flavor, when Eldrin said to get her fucking hands off of her, her eyes a little bit of lightning you see in her eyes. Love it. Uh, 26. Cool. 26 hits. Um, roll me a d20 before you roll, because the damage will matter, but there's, there's a thing that we can do while we're doing that. 14. 14. So 14 is the DC that you're going to have to beat for this, or that, that she's going to have to beat for this. Okay, cool. Uh, she goes sailing into the bookcase as you just just run up hard shoulder into the scimitar into the hand as you send her flying into that bookcase um it's a floating angel <laughs> uh very cool wilbur it's your turn uh first off take 35 points of psychic damage uh, halved to 22. What does it look like when he takes the damage? Is he like bleeding from his nose or like? It truly doesn't look like anything. What okay. you see is Wilbur is seemingly going into like a full level of shock, but is still fully able to talk, able to speak and seems like looking at Wilbur's face, Wilbur seems to be at a point of awe and admiration. Wilbur, on your side, you're not even here anymore. You're in the grove, uh, running along with a little child with blonde hair and a black robe. That's a good, that's a good fantasy right there. Um, I'm going to die. There you go. Uh, I will say for, for I will allow Guar and Milo to now be ahead of Brumhilda in this. Uh, so does Norris uh, come up with them with my backpack? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, so he so he's following, kind of moving in your movement. It's going to take. Uh, I'll say this: both of you roll me athletics checks. Can I cast haste in this house? Uh, there's a chance that it would be counterspelled. Uh, that's a 28 on my athletics. Cool. Uh, with a 28, uh, Milo, uh, are you uh, are you also rushing in, I assume? 
Yeah, Milo's gonna um, uh, step of the wind um, and speedy uh, or speedy step. Uh, I'll say because you have that, the DC yeah, is lower. But give me that athletics check. Ooh, I could also miss D step. Athletics. That was uh, twenty one. Fantastic. Cool. Uh, both of you are able to uh, move through full on slow motion running up the steps. And actually, at this point, because the DC was actually pretty high for both of you, uh, Guar, you feel there's a moment where uh, you like take a like a step on the first step and the step completely breaks underneath you. Um, uh, the second one seems to be also breaking as you now just try to use the railings to continue on, and now you're having to outrun a staircase that is falling down behind you. Uh, uh, Milo, you're kind of halfway up the stairs, so you were a little closer to begin with, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Um, so you are both able to, the, at the end of your turn, you are able to reach, uh, the door and you see, uh, Brumhelda, uh, you, you are able to witness Brumhelda's turn. That makes sense in the doorway. Um, Brumhilda, uh... Is it not... I, have, I haven't gone yet, have I? Uh, Brumhilda hasn't gone yet. In terms of, like, that was, like, her, like, it was, like, almost like a oh, reaction okay. to... Okay. Yeah. So, Brumhilda's turn. Uh, the reason I was saying, like, the, like, if you... If you try to, like, do some sort of attack sort of thing, that there's a possibility that your spell would have been wasted in the attempt. Okay. If that makes sense. I just drop my... Drop my earbud on my my ear. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, at this point, you see Brumhilda, uh, like, gets up off the corner. You see the cut that you've put onto her body on the side immediately heals up at this point, and you see her say, "I said I have it under control," and like it becomes this booming sort of sound, and you see, you see books start to fly off the shelves towards all of you, including those that were in the doorway. I need a deck save from everybody, except for Wilbur. Yeah, Who's do you close Norris, to me? Too? Who's close to me? Yes. Uh, just Milo. Uh, Noros, and Noros, right? yeah. And Noros, yeah. Plus four. Plus four boys. You said a deck save? Yes. That is a 23. Be in so much trouble. 28. 21 for Noros, and then for me. 28 for Milo. Ugh, six for Eldrin. Okay, uh, give me those again. Sorry, my brain broke. Six for Eldrin, 21 for Norris. Okay. 28 for Milo. Okay. 28 40. for Saren. Okay. 23 for Guar. You guys all beat the DC on this. As you see books come flying Not out, me. You, you're able to, except for Eldrin, yeah. Um, as the books come flying out and uh, like Guar and Milo, you have like time to kind of react enough to be able to kind of like push it outside. I'm gonna say for Noros, like it doesn't even get to Noros. I imagine just Noros is just behind you guys at this moment. Um, uh, Eldrin, uh, you take, Here's what we do for this. I think because this is this is cool and this is this is a, a fun way to do this. This is uh, uh, you take seven points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. But I'm gonna say roll me a con save for the spell that you're about to cast. Um, I have advantage on that. Fantastic. Is it Warcaster? Yeah. Nice. Um, a con save. 17. Yeah. 17. Cool. Yeah, so you make you make the curse. Or, sorry, you make... Um, I curse Wilbur. You curse Wilbur. Um, Double it is It is now your turn. Okay, so I'm... Since I don't have my backpack yet... Um, I'm going to do the remove curse on him and hope it, it works. Cool. You got it. Uh, tell me what the, uh, 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 talk to me about what the remove curse looks like. Um, so I, my eyes go like, um, like white as I put my hand on Wilbur 
Um, and then how we've done it before is if he's in pain or something's hurting him or something like what happens to me will differ depending on what type of curse it is. Um, because when, when I, I healed crits before, I was in immense pain and screamed. And then when I healed Ellie and I, I think I couldn't see for like a second. Yeah. Um, so here's, here's what I think happens, which is very beautiful. Eldrin, for a second as you heal Wilbur, Wilbur, you are going to fully come to in this. Remove curse works. That's exactly uh, what uh, was needed, or greater restoration, either one. Yeah. Um, I was going to do as, one of those. <laughs> as, uh, as Wilbur comes to Eldrin, you feeling like taking in half of this effect as a cleric is interesting because the feeling that you're getting is intense awe and admiration to the point of idolization but for Eldrin that's a conflicting thought so I think in a weird way, those both cancel out. And we have a moment where I think this has to be a, just a possibility of working. Give me a religion check. Okay. Can I guide myself? Uh, no. Okay. Um, that would be 22. Uh, I rolled a net one. <laughs> so, in this moment... <laughs> Jamie goes, no, you didn't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in this... <laughs> in this moment, <laughs> there is a... There's an option here. And I'm going to leave it up to Lorianne to decide from Eldrin. You have two emotions that you can go with here. Understanding, a need to understand. But I would, I, I would venture that to be able to kind of have this be like sort of like two different sort of like, like opposite sort of ideas on this. It would be, uh, uh, we'll simplify and just say love. What, my understa understanding or love? I'll, I'll explain more in a second. The other okay. one is... Hatred. I feel like I don't need to tell you, Lorraine, but I think it's a point that is, that's, that's important to be able to kind of recognize this moment is not what you think is the way the hero picks for the story it's what your character would choose in this moment if you choose love and in this case it is a it's hearkening back to to what huxley said Loving someone is knowing what they're capable of. So it would be trying to understand. Or there is hate. Which allows the thing that is hurting your loved one. To not be able to do so anymore. So I, I know that for certain that that path will make Wilbur okay. I don't know if the love path will. 
I think in character you might not. I think it's. Uh, I think the important part to this is, in, in a way of like, do you think Eldrin is so angry with something that most likely was Brumhilda's fault, and Br- you saw Brumhilda actively keeping you from being able to fix your friend who was actively dying? Does that does that overpower your need to understand what happened? Uh, I think the Eldrin's on the path to being more understanding, but all that stuff just happened today. So I think seeing Wilbur. <sighs> It's so easy to fall back to anger and hate, so she knows that that's a, that is what is going to ensure Wilbur's okay. So that's what she'll go with. Okay. You turn face from Hilda. Time almost seems like it's almost standing still for everybody. You can see Quar and Milo in the doorway trying to push themselves through. You can see uh, at this point it doesn't matter for what's happening here. You see Wilbur's eyes seem to go from this uh, uh, Saren, actually that's funny, Saren got blocked, um, knocked back so I forgot to mention that Wilbur's eyes were also glowing gold. Um, and I shouldn't say gold because that's akin to Guar a little bit. It's yellow, like a bright yellow, which is more akin to Brumhilda. You see that, that yellow, fluorescent yellow sort of light starts to can, kind of come away from Wilbur. You see Saren looking down, probably grabbing like Wilbur's leg to try to just get close. This is like this is like like a feather taking twenty minutes to fall from the table level of like speed. It's super slow. You turn and you face from Helda whose face is still in that expert. She hasn't joined you in the speed that you're able to be in. She's still in that slow speed. You see her face contorted in a in a look that Trying to think of where you've seen it before, if you have. It's a look of hurtful rage. Eyes are yellow, pupilless, but you can see that as you're moving towards her, her, her eyes don't follow your gaze. So you know that she's not aware of what's happening. You put a hand on her chest. And you feel personas flowing through you. What do you say? I say I like whisper you are too dangerous
Uh, roll me a spell attack, please. Um, that would be an, um, 26. Can I choose what spell? Sure, yeah, if you want to. It's kind of like more of a flavor here at this point, but yeah. Okay. Cause, so you can tell me if this doesn't work, because I'm angry, and I know I chose hate. But I also know in a cold way that she's necessary. So I want to... Oh, I love that. I yeah. I want to imbue some sort of with Persona's power, I, I, I'm hoping it can do something different, but kind of like imbue like a calm emotion that like is much more powerful. Okay. But I'm totally fine if Eldrin feels like that path is blocked or something. I'm totally fine with something else. The only thing I will say in here is that I think calm emotions and the idea of like... <sighs> hmm. It's tricky. I think with calm emotions, it's more akin to the level of understanding. And you still have a choice there. If you think if you think the idea that Eldrin... Because Eldrin does have a uh, like maybe like a full couple seconds like in their own mind... Uh, in her own mind to be able to weigh the pros and cons here mm -hmm. and I so like I think... the I like the idea oh. of like the cold just just real quick I like the idea of the like the cold recognizing of like a tool we need you mm -hmm. so I so can't I think... kill you yeah I think Eldrin says she whispers the you're too dangerous and then pauses and then says but you're necessary very coldly and then does the more understanding path okay You you see a moment that we left off on months ago. A little girl, Riley, having a conversation and walking off. In this version, Riley walks off and Brunhilda watches. He's small, girl, black robes, blonde hair, a little too long, somewhat unkempt. She's sitting on a rock. She's staring out, she's not facing you, staring out, looking at Riley as she walks off. And then she turns and looks at you. You feel a similar sort of effect here, as this is a very similar thing that has happened. From Hilda is both here and not here. What do you do? I walk up to her and 
think I, I kneel down so I'm like eye level with her. Um, and I. Uh, and I say, um, I am so sorry for the life that you have been given and for the pain that you have had to endure. But it is not an excuse to put my friends' lives in jeopardy. You are out of control, and you need to figure out how to rein it in. happened is you were a scared little girl deep down and you refuse to let anyone in and is going to be the death of you and probably the death of those around you. It is destroying you. You need to let people in. Hilda looks up at you. I've been out of control for so long. I was afraid I was afraid that when the time came there wouldn't be anyone that have what it takes to do what needs to be done. I will share a promise with you. I think I lean in closer. I will do what I can to let people in. As long as you don't let as long as you don't let me lose them. As long as you do what needs to be done before that happens. Because I can't, I can't, I can't be the cause of any more death. This is where, this is what I'm talking about. You think that you're not worth saving, either. And you are. And if you let us, we will protect you just as much as we protect each other. You are worth saving, Brunilda. And as much as I want to kill you right now for what you did to Wilbur, I promise to protect you. not the promise of looking. I'm 
Promise me you'll be there to do it. If and when the time comes. You know I will. But I will not let it get to that. Um, I'm going to lean in and I'm going to hug her. And I'm going to say... You are worthy of love. Stop feeling like you aren't. Come back. I need a dexterity saving throw from everybody except for Guar and Wilbur right now. And Eldrin, I'll say. Eleven for Milo. Twenty-nine. Cool. There is a there's an immediate sound of a crackling storm as the books continue to fly off the shelves. Milo, you catch one in the face from the binding and it's enough to drop to a knee and rub your head. And I need you to roll me a perception check. And you better hope it's low. It's a nat 20. <laughs> Incredible. We'll handle that in a second. Oh, no, taken out by a book. A book has all the knowledge of the world, and it's just gonna blow your brain. <laughs> I, love I roll. I roll so dumb. Like um, I hate you. I hate you and your. My life. dice. My dice are so stupid. <laughs> Guar. Sorry, I didn't mean to turn the the emotional music off. Let me put this on back in. As you see Wilbur come to. thought occurs to you. You heard what Wilbur was saying. You saw Wilbur, albeit seeming to undergo extreme effects from whatever Brumhilda was giving off. And you've seen that before. Think back to your moments being under Tall's control. And you were never quite sure how you got out of it. I think, honestly, there's a part of you that, like, I just smartened up. Because that makes sense. There's a point where you just recognize, oh, the cult is bad. Okay, it, yeah. It was probably shortly after I killed my brother under his influence, but yeah. It wasn't. Oh. Well then. You remember after that time that there was a feeling of confusion. Why would this Why would the chosen one, the, 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 the true king, the, the being that is going to bring us all to salvation, 
Why would they test me with this if I not proven loyal enough? And you remembered that you decided that it was just best for you to to walk off into forest clearing. And for some reason, whether it was whether it was too much focus or a lack of focus, you just kind of kept walking. And it makes sense to say you came to terms with recognizing that that wasn't okay. But in that moment, you recognize that it wasn't experience that took you out of Tall's literal spell. It was distance. Seeing Wilbur reacting and literally suffering for Brumhilda reminds you of the early days where you remember that Tall seemed to be around a lot more, closer to beings. And you remember that it takes you until this point to realize a lot of them seem to get sick. They, before they did, they seemed to get disoriented, extremist, even in the cult of being, of wanting no food, no water, just Tall's grace and just to have him look at me. You remember that they started to seem like they were getting older, losing hair, body, contorting. Tell me what Guar is thinking in this moment. We're still in slow motion, by the way. Just another, another thing that I gotta fucking deal with. Um, well, there's a there's a serious moment of recognition oh, for here. Sh- for yeah. sure, it's a re- recognition that that like that, that makes sense that. Brimhilda is Tall's daughter because she's having the same effect on Wilbur as I've seen Tall have on the people of Glendelver. They are a similar thing. Except that Tall did it on purpose and Brimhilda did, did, I don't think did. I don't think. Roll me a Only a straight intelligence check. That is a 14. 14 is not bad. Guar, who's good in the battle tactics of understanding situations, but not necessarily in a, like, theological sort of like understanding of history and whatnot. The one thing that you do know is that even being in a part of Tall's cult and actually moving outside of it, when you have contacted and talked to people who have, who have been even older folks who have been around, no one seems to know who the hell Tall is or anything he represents in that. Which is interesting, because Tal has been around for a long time, it seems. You guys have uh, collected that for over 150 years. And it was popular enough, it was big enough, that Celestia had to get involved. And you think about how they came from the sky. And there were ones that said that they wanted peace and wanted tranquility and wanted happiness for everyone. And there was ones that wanted something more, something more powerful uh, relating to that. But Celestia didn't take the ones that wanted just that. They took all of them. 
with a 14, you recognize that the reason why they did was because all of them were infecting the people around them. As you, as you think about this, by the way, also, because Celeste is also in your brain. Celeste says to you, I know it hurts, but now you understand why she can't stay here. stone slow motion right but I would make my way over to Wilbur Saren and Eldrin and try to like just like and Milo too but I think Milo's on the other side of the room right um it's your moment you're the DM go for it is Eldrin there or is she with Broomhilda Eldrin is there um both Broomhilda and Eldrin are there they're all so much littler than me. I think I would just be trying to scoop them all up and get the fuck out of that room. I love it. Um, roll me an athletics check. That is a 25. Let's say with a 25, you are able to run and grab Wilbur. Saren, pull them outside, run back in and recognize the time is still going as you clutch your weapon and Celeste says, it's okay, I'm with you. And you cast haste on yourself, which is going to be allowed in this instance, as you are able to move and grab all of them. Where do you bring them? To the temple. As you do so, give me a uh, give me a dexterity saving throw. Oh, that's not good. Uh, that is a twelve. To physically do this, you need to take two at a time. You can't carry them all at once. So, who do you take first? Uh, Wilbur and Sarah are the closest together, right? Yeah. So I did them first. Wilbur, Sarah. You, with haste, run down. You notice the stairs are kind of like broken underneath you. You just kind of like uh, run, like wall jump from the side to the side to be able to kind of get to the side there and, and, and tuck and roll as you grab to the side of the ladder. You feel a couple of the rungs do, 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 seem to like break under your grip against the gravity as you as you are able to hold on and let go and and jump in and you throw them into the uh, the temple. You run back, you grab um, uh, Milo uh, and Eldrin. Eldrin. I have a question. I thought that I was not in slow motion. Uh, you're you're not. So if you think you would contest this, feel free. I would. Uh, oh, uh, Guar is in haste, so there's like a whole other speed that he's at. But he was already slower, so is he normal now? For me, he was slower. I mean, we're... Uh, what would you like to do? I, w- I don't want to leave Brimhilda. I just made a promise to her. Okay. Um, I'll say for the for the sake of this, you have a moment to be able to uh, to recognize. Uh, bye, 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 Jamie. Um, you're able to recognize that in this moment, there's a 
crack that happens from the foundation of this house from everything that's been that's been hitting it and moving through it and breaking uh, so as Guar you're recognizing this and Elgin you're recognizing this Guar what are you saying uh, we have to get out of this room we can't leave her we're not we're just getting distance no we can't she can't come to you alone Wilbur was Wilbur was sick because of exposure. Her very presence caused that. Get Noros and Milo out of here, and I will get her. No, no, we, we need to get away from her. I say that with a tear in my eye. We have to get away from her. I've seen it before. I, we, it, it will kill us all. Take Noros and Milo. I'll be fine. I'm not leaving you again. You can only take two at a time. You could grab Please. onto my back. I could give you a piggyback ride out of here. I will say above board, Milo does a slow fall. I'm seeing if I have anything that can protect me. I don't. Um, does Eldrin feel like this house is I mean there's a crack does it feel like it's gonna okay ugh god damn it yeah I mean she'll she'll go with you Oh, yeah, I don't know what else to do. As you, as you go, from Helda still seems to be kind of frozen in place. As you run from the second floor down, you feel Marvin continuing to break apart. Wait. It's, 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 yeah. While he's mm-hmm. no, I feel like that's a really bad idea. Never mind. While uh, Marvin is falling apart, Quar, you uh, carry both Aldrin and Milo down. Um, we'll say, I'm going to say above board because Gerard's also here. Norris is an NPC. I'm not going to kill him. Okay. So they'll just be, uh, I think, in the realms of what's happening here. We'll say that, that Quar was able to kind of make one more run to grab both Gerard and in Norris. And, and Patch, obviously, because he's here. No one's seen Patch. <laughs> as you, uh, as you're carrying both under Milo, Guar, you uh, find yourself, uh, you trip on that first floor, and you notice that you are, uh, your metal boot is caught in between two of the floorboards that have just somewhat cracked in that moment. I would push both Eldrin and Milo as hard as I can toward the door. With that, I think it was a 28 or it was a 25? Uh, 25. Check that you did. 25. 25. With that 25, you push them and they both go tumbling out uh, Eldrin you're able to just kind of grab onto whatever the rungs are that are left to be able to kind of steady yourself Milo's going to be fine um, as we speed back up and the house falls apart with both Guar and Brumhilda inside. And that's where we're going to end tonight's session.
damn it. We'll see you guys next week.